welcome back to another episode of the System Podcast. The boys and I sat down on the 3rd of October to film this one and I'd be lying if this wasn't my favourite. It is quite controversial and we exposed a number of key characters in this industry. Simo got a very strong mention and we basically exposed his shady marketing, the way he deletes tips on Instagram stories and claims to be a super profitable punter despite not actually having publicly accessible results. He wasn't the only tipsers that we mentioned. We actually mentioned a couple of new players in this game who are basically combining sex and gambling with OnlyFans in an attempt to suck in desperate Australian punters without actually having any public results. We are tracking the paid results as well as any free tips that are sent out by these services on our own spreadsheets and we'll be releasing those to anyone who wants them. If you have any other service who you believe is not profitable and claims to be, please send us a DM and we will also track their results. We had to mention Brennan Favola on this podcast as well with his new collaboration with Bet Nation, which is genuinely disgusting. Once again, Nathan Brown, Brennan Goddard, Georgie Parker, and Daisy Thomas got a mention and we threw out a challenge to them. Finally, we spoke about how your betting accounts are an absolute goldmine and why every punter in Australia should be using theirs smarter and more efficiently and why spring is genuinely Christmas for anyone who wants to learn how to use their betting accounts. All relevant links are in the description of both Spotify and YouTube. And once again, if you have any questions for us, feel free to leave a comment or contact us directly on any of our social media channels or through our website. We hope you guys get something out of this one. Uh, Well, welcome back, lads. Um, Second time at filming this podcast. We actually filmed this podcast last week. But JP forgot to basically make sure the cameras were working. So this is the second time around. But yeah, welcome back to everyone. This is our fifth podcast that we have done now. Um, it's been a couple of months since we've done our last one. But there's been a lot that has changed. A lot's happened. Obviously, we've launched a new website. That's really exciting. There's been a lot of time and effort that's gone, got put into that website. And we think it's made you know probably just a better experience all around for everyone involved. For all the members, for, for even the community, there's a lot of free content on there. You don't even need to sign up. You can just go through the website and you can get a lot of free education and hopefully improve your, your gambling in that sense there. But as well as that, obviously, it's spring has come around now. You know, we're about a month into spring, so that's really exciting. We'll touch on, you know, how valuable your accounts are at this point. But first, I suppose we could probably start off with talking just about a bit about match betting in general um, and sort of just some stories about where we came from as a match betting, you know, in the match betting industry, I suppose, and some some sort of fun, interesting stories. But yeah, welcome, guys. How are we doing? Welcome back. Very Second good. part two of fuck up last week, basically. I'll put my hand up for that. <laughs> Forgot to format two of the cameras, memory cards. So 86 minutes filmed and 10 minutes actually filmed. Well, all of mine was filmed. Yeah, but... The important part, but that's all good. Spring's here as well. We're in the middle of spring, which is elite, best time of the year by far. Yes. But um, as Steve alluded to, obviously, we're going to be talking about you know where we came from, match betting wise, and some of the uh, stories and things that led us to where we are now. Um, and I obviously know a lot of these stories that JP has, but I think JP's might be the most entertaining by far. So do you want to give us maybe your best match betting experience or your best? month on match betting or your best you know period of time that you were a match better when you were doing yeah. it super heavily yeah so um started my match betting journey in 2014 um and then probably started to really hone in on it um 2016 to 19 and then again sort of 19 20 um towards the back end of 19 but my best ever period was definitely the world cup 2018 literally fucking piss take um and you'd know about this time because you were getting the rewards while you were on holiday in Europe, I think. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the numbers from that, there was a promotion going with the early payout on soccer. So all World Cup matches, if your team led at halftime, no matter what the margin was or whatever happened at the end of the match, your halftime payout would, would happen on your head to, on your win draw win market. So for example, you could have $500 on a $7 team playing against like fucking Germany or something who's a favourite and if Mexico led at half time you would get paid out $3,500 that was an actual game yeah that's, that's right amazing memory. correct 1-0 yeah. Mexico yeah, won that was. match yeah. um, that was an early payout um, and for example like you're not gambling it was obviously ways in which we teach you how to manipulate those promotions but the key thing to understand was it wasn't capped so you could put an unlimited amount on the, any team and if they led at half time you get paid out so I made t- only 20k and now I know that sounds dumb but like people would have made 
100k during that time oh well if you had like basically if you had accounts and you had unlimited yep. money you could have made well, there's no if you could just add zeros to your yep. bets like it would have been a fucking fill yep. up and people listening to this are probably thinking like what a load of shit that's bullshit whatever but and and this is what we say like match betting isn't like it is yeah it's probably hard now. to grasp because there's nothing that exists like that now a promotion like that now would have a max 200 and yeah, that would two, be like maybe three other. bookies if you're lucky, I think like Bluebet, Neds, and some other company do an early payout for the for the AFL, similar to that. But with soccer, it was just a lead. So like, it wasn't a lead by two, lead by three goals, lead by twenty points, lead by thirty points like Bet365 have. It was literally lead by a goal. And with soccer, all you need is one goal, and you lead and you, you paid out. So were they not banning people at this point? They in did. Time or they, they, were? they were, but it was very different. Um, yes. Obviously, we did get banned um, occasionally, and this is how we learned to, to get really good at sustainability, essentially making our own fuck-ups. There was a few um, bookies that you could use, though, as well. Yeah, there, there was Bet365, there was sports, but there was Ladbrokes doing it. Um, I think that was the main three during the World Cup. I used to sit back, like, I wake up at 1 a.m. There was three matches every night. I think 11, a, 11 p.m., 1 or 2, and then 4. Yeah. I used to wake up at halftime on every match or stay up for the first one and then go to bed and, or stay up for the first two and then wake up for the third one. And I used to hedge my position according to what the result was at halftime. But Kiro, who he yeah, was yeah. doing it as well, he had this thing where he'd do the first two and he'd, he'd said, rest is best for the last one. And he literally <laughs> left them all. And there were so many reversals on the, the last match oh. where the, the halftime team would lead and then he cleaned up 30K and he did so Me much Me and Bren let work. most of them just go through. Yeah, you, you were better off letting them go. Yeah. Um, I Where possible, we would have. But yeah, as you said, I was in Europe at the time and the games were like 2 p.m., 5 p.m., 8 p.m. Yeah. And like, especially by like the last game, like if you're in Europe, we, me and Mills would have had a few beers by then and yeah. it was like, oh, I'm not going to yeah, turn mean, my VPN on and crunch the numbers and yeah. put a fucking $3,000 cover bet on. I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, you have to ring up that time as well. Yeah, just have so a few more beers. How much did you end up making between the two of you? Me and Bren did it because Bren was here in Australia while I was over there. So it just made it a lot easier to kind of run like a dual operation. I basically yeah. fronted the capital and I was like, just do this, this and this. We made like, I think like 14K each. Yeah. So as you were saying, like you're like 20K is not much. We made close to 30 between the two of us, but yeah, Kiro probably made. So Kiro's got 30, you've got 30 between the two and I've got 20. That's yeah. 80K essentially between three people. And it could have been like astronomically Four more. People, yeah. Like it could have been so much more. What yeah. Did you, what'd you start with? What was your initial outlay that you began? I couldn't even remember. Oh, maybe, I had like, capital, like, like yeah, yeah, I had a lot of yeah, capital. Yeah, like, yeah. But I think I think I only needed to start with like ten, think and the, yeah, and then yeah. like that just was enough to disperse through accounts and then with results and stuff. Because the reality is like you're not losing hundreds of dollars if, nah. if the game didn't come off. It was like yeah, the ratio. 60, was... It was like sixty or seventy bucks. But I even think like in the first six games, like two of them hit. Yeah. So our bankroll That's had already huge. skyrocketed. Yeah. I think it only hit like nine games, but yeah. two of them were in like the first like two days. Like the first game hit when I was on the plane over. Yeah. It was like Portugal versus Spain. I was yeah, flying was... Eddie had and I was watching the game on the I mean, Obviously, it didn't have like two internet, or two yeah. or two or something. but it was like two one and half time, and Portugal were up, and they were n- not the favourites. I was like, "You fucking beauty!" Yeah. And then in <laughs> Spain won. I was like, "You'll be okay." <laughs> <laughs> Legit. It was, yeah, that it was, was a piss take. Um, that month as well correlated to like the early payout in the NRL and the AFL going off as well. There was State of Origin, and I made forty five k, I think, in about a five week period during that time. Madness. And it was fucked. Like. And like you look back on that now and it gives you the itch now to, to go back and do it because obviously I don't do it anymore. I haven't done it for like a year now because it's just too big hustle and system. I wish I started back then. Oh, yeah. and this was... is what like, it's just not the same anymore. Yes, you can make an absolute killing. Like we had a guy message through our Discord this week. He's made 10K in the last month and he said, I, I can't see myself going below 8K a month from now on. And it's like, it really depends how serious you want to take it. Obviously that's outliers. We don't want to give the false impression of that's what's happening to everyone of our customers. Um, people are making 300 a month, 500 a month, whatever, but yeah. But what Steve's just said then, like, you know, he's like, I wish I started earlier. That's still the case now. Like the Mm. promos, the specials and stuff that we have now, in two years, they won't be the same. They probably won't be as lucrative. So if you are thinking about doing it or you're on the fence or you're like, oh, you know, I don't have the offers that Tom and JP had five, six years ago. So what's the point now? The point is like, first of all, you're not going to be losing. You're going to be making money. And second of all, the offers may be very different. They might even be more lucrative in the future. Who knows? But until you learn the skills, have the knowledge and get a setup that works for you, you're literally just like, you're just wasting time really. Yeah. Well, it's shifted now to racing. The majority yeah, of yeah. the promotions are racing and anyone kind of doing those sport promo methods and, and sending out that kind of early payout rubbish to like 200 plus people and everyone betting on the same agency just 
delete your accounts yeah, ASAP. It's a pretty quick way to get wiped like, out. And, and even just doing it on your own, like those promotions are fully for rookies. Like they, they're they like on small bookies. People do dumb shit like taking the max stake on every time and then see you later. But you need to be making 90 plus percent of your money these days on racing because that's yeah. where you can hide more. You can, obviously there's more promotions and, and there's Well, they're also harder to exploit. So unless you know what you're doing, like yes, you can't yeah, just exactly. be a full-blown amateur mug and, and get benefit out of the yeah. horse promos if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you, you either need Whereas to with like a double or... payout or whatever, even if you don't even know how to do it properly, yeah. you can back someone if they're leading at half time, you Correct. get paid out and you think you're a genius. Like, yeah. Um, so that's the difference. I think my story, I know yeah, we're still what, talking about yeah. stories. Mine would be very similar to you. I, that was one of the most fun six weeks of my life. Like, <laughs> going through Europe with that, like essentially like, yeah, we'd be having beers every afternoon watching the game. I'd be like, Mulesy, like if this one hits, like <laughs> dinner's on me or whatever. And he'd be fucking pissing himself. So that was a lot of fun. And then also like there was a period where I was working pretty closely with you through yep. the AFL NRL where some of those weekends we had like monster fill-ups. And I yeah. just remember like, I remember one game so clearly. It was like yeah. um, uh, the Storm versus Warriors. Oh, okay. And I was like, I was still in this like position where I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to risk like $40 on games that aren't going to win. And you're like, bro, we're just doing it every game. Yeah. Like just hammer it. You're like, just put this money. No, on it this. was like a dollar 10. Yeah. It was, and, yeah, yeah. Warriors like seven bucks. I'm like, what's the point of doing this game? Because it's man, like the, yeah, Storm are going to win by 40. At halftime, Warriors are up like 12-0. I was at the gym and I hedged it at the gym <laughs> and we made like, I think it was like two or three K for the, for the match. I was and so he, funny. before the match, he's like, I was don't do it. Yeah, don't I was do so it. shattered. I'm like, Fuck it, just, that's a waste I'm like, like you're just bucks. giving away 40 bucks. That game's not going to I'm like, just relax, stick check, to the process. Check that's my it. game. It was like the Friday night game. Check my phone half time. I'm like, but when texting those ones... JP. He's like in the gym. I'm like, mate, they're up 12 nil. He's like, yeah. don't worry. Like, we need the siren go. We need the siren. He's like, we're out. I'm like, you fucking When those ones hit, they cash in. And Storm won. So Storm went up winning. Yeah, I see you got the double. But we we hedged it. They were like $4 at half time. Like, it was a perfect game to just take. Yeah. Full take it out, take it all out, move on. It was so funny. But yeah, that, that's just that period of time. Like it's probably like a, a year and a half. Yeah. That was I, just just amazing. I and I was a, still working as well. So I've got a pretty funny story about having a hedge. So when I started up, they the, the halftime payout specials were still pretty pretty lucrative. Um, I'm not even sure if they are still now. I don't know. They're very minuscule. Like Ned's does like a couple of matches a weekend. They do like 200. Blue Bed yeah. does a couple, but yeah. you can get pretty much. When I started, I yeah. think you were still getting up to 250 stake basically yeah. across all the major bookies. Correct. So you could still, you know, 250 at like seven or eights or something. You were still, there were some Friday nights I was making you know, maybe a grand or something like that. Yeah. So it's still pretty good. But one Sunday, I remember I had it with Bet365 and I just started like dating, dating this girl at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we were out to get burgers and oh, I, <laughs> oh we we're probably like maybe like four or five dates in and i've checked the score at half time and sure enough it's hit and i'm like Fuck, I'll, i've just got to go outside and yeah, put a bet right. on so i just <laughs> i left the date went outside called up at 365 full degenerate she must have been thinking i dated her for a little while but she must have been thinking like this is ridiculous this like, is what fucked. am i getting myself into but like realistically and like, like Locking in it was actually like just like correct like yeah, a really yeah. like sensible the opposite way of being a gambler. yeah the opposite of being a degenerate yeah i've got a funny one i was i used to be an osteopath and i had a we used to do the <laughs> nba promotion during the week so early payout on the half time and that used to be pretty like high with points bet as well and i remember it was it was someone i knew like it was kind of on a friend level um but it was a patient that i'd become a friend rather than a friend being a patient and i halfway through one of the client other uh, sessions I'm like rubbing his back or whatever, fixing up his... <laughs> and I'm just like, he's face down. My phone's on the desk so I can see it. He can't. And I'm sorry, hi, mate. I've got to go and um, hedge something out. <laughs> and he knew what I, what I did like outside of osteo. And it was just funny, like guarantee like 500 bucks and, and move on. Otherwise, you sit there yeah. hoping it wins. And it's like, nah. The only money. other ridiculous one I can think of during that period is remember when Sportsbed had that wheel? Mm. <laughs> Nah. Was they that... just spun the wheel on Friday night and they would just pay out one oh, team, yeah, yeah. whichever team. Yeah, they did some dumb one. Once, whichever like team it landed on. And it was like the most rigged wheel. Like it wasn't even a real, it was like a like graphic. Like it was yeah. so dumb. And they'd just be like, whatever, up to like $500, whatever the wheel lands on. If you put your bet on this team before 5 p.m. Friday, they spin the wheel 5.30 Friday. And if it lands on that team, they pay you out. <laughs> it's pretty genius marketing. Oh, of course Because if fucking everyone's going to take a bet. And yeah, they everyone's just fucking loading wheel. it up. Yeah. <laughs> fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good that's that was brilliant. yeah that was very funny but that's yeah i, I remember one of the classics <laughs> was one of the big ones was the chase the ace the oz open chase yeah, the ace yeah. one i think that was william hill or something before like we, we i lost my that's how i tennis. lost my virginity <laughs> I, before we worked at the tennis <laughs> i didn't follow as a statistician 
Yeah, just so, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't touch it. No, I didn't touch it until yeah, yeah. like there was two days. I think I started working there. Fuck, I can't even remember now. I better not say the wrong date. <laughs> but that was with uh, William Hill. Yeah, yeah no, nah, that was Hill, yeah. um that was a piss take. You just back like Roundage to and then head him and he serves yeah. fucking forty aces and you make forty. Right, I, no, no, but I, I got onto that like real because was I lost my virginity yeah. to like match betting <laughs> for that one. And that was back when it was a dollar cash. Yeah, yeah, it was like full on dollar blown withdrawal yeah, forty dollars. Yeah. One of them, no, nah, one of them. There was one. Yeah, year that's where, Bedezy's wheel. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Was it but, wheel? But, but they yeah. after, but that's when they turned it to bonus. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but still, yeah. you could get like ten dollars yeah, bonus. I got a ten yeah, X yeah. on his nut, and he oh, served thirty four bombs. Yeah. <laughs> Three hundred forty. <laughs> Two hundred fifty bucks. But I was also yeah, like cashing in massively then as well because no one else knew about it. No one else had William Hills, so I was like, yeah. yeah oh, you yeah, was cashing. Yeah. Uh, every <laughs> like every every player, every ace. Every player, every ace. <laughs> Count them up. Uh, I remember one Wimbledon actually. I stayed up every match. There was a promotion on if the te- if the, as soon as your team or player sorry wins the first set, you get paid out or you yeah. something like that. So I'd sit there and because I watched tennis a lot, I could kind of see the match and I'm pretty good at understanding tennis. And you could see like massive fluctuations when you get the early payout and then you hedge it. And I think I took home like it wasn't as worth it as World Cups, probably like eight or nine k for that, but. Yeah. It all adds up, and that's how like we kind of made a living during those periods. But yeah. I'm sure people are sick of hearing about our stories yeah. and, and want to move on from that. So, what is it now? Spring. Um, I'm sure everyone listening to this will be aware that it's spring. All the fucking texts coming through your phone, advertising galore. Everywhere. But what that means for um, people who have betting accounts, or even if you don't, is that it's a genuine piss take this time of year because. There's more promotions, there's more specials, there's more offers, more personalized offers, but there's also more people punting. So you can also hide behind these kind of mug punters. And with all everyone, obviously, as we know, 99% of people are losing. There's still an absolute massive amount of money you can take home. Um, and I guess what, what do we want to kind of say about um, how to get involved? If, if you Probably if you have losing accounts as well, if you're someone who can control your discipline. Um, well, obviously, the they've, like, they've just heard us talk about, you know, how much money we've made through our accounts yeah. and stuff like that, whatever, like tooting our own horns. But the reality is, as you said, there's there's money to be made Hundreds, everywhere, especially thousands. like at this time of the year, if you know what you're doing and you've got yep. accounts set up in the right way, it, it's genuinely a goldmine. Obviously, there are things that you have to avoid and you touch on it. Like if you don't know what you're doing or you're doing things like subpar or suboptimal, you are going to get wiped out. You get restricted yep. ban. Bookies have never been hotter on it. But... Yeah, maybe Steve could dive into a little bit. Like, what's what's an account worth? What's one of the big dogs worth? You know, sports bet, points bet, tab, yeah. Neds, l- lads. What are these? What are they worth to punters? Yeah, stacks. The, the, people just need to understand how valuable their accounts are. I remember I did a I did a video on TikTok probably eighteen months ago, basically asking people like, you know, would you sell your sports bet account for a thousand dollars? And everyone. Everyone thought that I was buying sports bet accounts for $1,000. No, that's not the point I was making. The point was, is that your sports bet account is worth a lot of money. It's I would buy it for $1,000. In a theoretical world, yeah, I would no buy it for $1,000 because we know how valuable they are and how much you can make. Like, If you've got an account, um, and this really depends on sort of um, a few variables depending on sort of the account history. You know, if the account history is typically run by a gambler who's a bit of a degenerate, you know, puts stupid multis on, is typically losing over yeah. the long term, you know, that account is going to be extremely valuable because what the bookies do is they grade you. They grade you as basically a customer, a number on their books, and they grade you as someone who's either a threat to them or someone who's potentially a cash cow to them. And if you're a threat, obviously that's where they identify you and they say, see you later. But if you're a cash cow, then they're some, well, you're someone that they're going to target and they're going to come after you with massive promotions, deposit offers, bonus bet returns back to $250 in some instances. I don't know if it goes yeah, higher. There you go, higher, yeah. It goes Thousand, higher. Yeah. It probably, it. It's probably, yeah, it's probably endless really depending yeah. on how big of a gambler it's all, you are. Yeah, spectrum. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a video that was uh, trending on TikTok. A lot of people sent it to me. I think you've seen it. Yeah. Someone put it in our chats regarding an ex, um, like, supervisor of a bookie, um, morphed voice, whatever. Um, covered up and he was just talking about how essentially they're just like they just hone in on the the, the big yeah. losers and it, that would bring back i think there's a stat on it i don't know the exact stat but the majority of the profits are made by those full-on degenerates off these bookies so people will be losing like 200 300k a year those are the, where all their max revenue like majority of their revenues come from yes people losing a grand here or there for the year they add up but these big ones are the ones where all their revenue comes from and he was talking about like how they full-on just it's just numbers for the bookies. All they want is revenue. So they will do all all types of different shit. And if they know someone is a full-on fucking 
gambling yeah. like full on out of control they will just literally give them everything because they know it's just going to result in more revenue for them. So yeah, well look at it. Yeah. You just got to look at it from sports bet's point of view or any corporate bookmaker's point of view. Like their goal as the CEO or the board of those companies, their goal is to literally make money for the shareholders, make the maximum, make amount. max yeah. profit. Literally. That is their single goal. It is yeah. single. They don't have any like no. environmental goals or no. social goals or moral no. goals no. or you know we're they're not being good blokes by offering their business. Their business is purely to identify how to make max profit. So if you're someone who's come, so tailing back to where we started, if you're someone who's come in with an account that, you know, is is basically you've been ticked off as a cash cow, you've been ticked off as this like person that's making them max profit, they're going to come at you with yeah. massive promos. And so if you can then, you know, we've had a couple of people and there's there's a couple of people, particularly in Hustle that have come through as well. Yeah. Um, they come in with these losing accounts and those accounts would be worth you know, you could easily make twenty thousand dollars, I reckon, with that one account in a year. And easily, you know, yeah. and you're probably you've probably got, I reckon, I don't know, you're probably better at commenting on this, but you've probably got a good couple of years, providing your defense and sustainability stays yeah. up to speed as well. You've got a good couple of years where you could fly completely under the radar. Yeah, so our I think he's our most profitable. Um I messaged him today because I knew we were gonna be talking about this, and he's at one hundred and forty thousand dollars profit. He has twenty accounts, they're all his, and he's lost two accounts in the entire time he's been a member and he's been, it was January 1, 2021 he joined, so nearly two years, mm -hmm. about uh, 21 months or whatever, and $140,000, two accounts banned out of 20. Mm -hmm. And they were shit ass fucking elite bet in text bet, who yeah. we're yeah. gonna speak about text bet, um, we've taken them off our promo list, um, we've just heard so much shit about text bet, text bet, I think you can scratch your ass and get banned there or, <laughs> or look at them the wrong way or pick your nose and they'll ban you. So. Um, well, there was a guy, there was one of our followers who literally <laughs> yeah. didn't place a promo bet. Banned. Yeah, banned. So, so. We, we took them off our promo list. Uh, there's rumors about them um, getting kind of bought out or whatever, I don't think the name of the thing that's buying them out, but we'll, we'll yeah. re readdress that or reassess that and, and dis discuss that in the future. But yeah, in terms of your accounts being valuable, especially if you're someone, we don't like to encourage like massive losing out of control gamblers to ever come near our service Correct. because we're very strong on that like tom runs the dms on both insta and uh, both hustler and the system and if anyone comes there like that who's like out of control or shows signs and a lot of people say oh you're not psychologists you're not but when you talk to people all the time it's very obvious who's who um when you're talking to like hundreds of people a week you can tell who's going to be like kind of serious and, and from what they say and if anyone comes there with like that then pretty much we just tell them to to be eat. honest a lot of people that reach out that, that are problem yeah. gamblers like admit it like they're like yeah. you know i've seen your videos i've seen your the shit you're talking about and like oh, i don't tell people this but like you know i'm losing you know yeah. two three grand a week or i've lost you know i'm an apprentice one of the guys like you know i'm an apprentice i've lost every cent that i've earned and i owe my parents like 10 grand i'm 19 and live at home and it's like and so they're reaching out to us because they're like fuck like what do i do and we're not sitting here going i oh, just follow our service man yeah. give us 100 bucks a month yeah. you know and of course we're not psychologists but and you spoke about it last week and I know the podcast got cut off, but the thing that I think is very easy for us to be able to speak to these people is because we didn't just wake up, you know, one day and start betting and going, fuck it, um, let's just be match betters. Like yeah. we used to lose punting. Yeah. We, like, can we used to gamble. Yeah. yeah, we can relate. We understand what it feels like to lose, you know, hundred bucks and want to get it back straight away. Or we understand like backing a favorite, a thing, a sure thing, a thing they can't lose. I know that one of my favorite stories that you've told me is back when you were younger, you know, one of like the only bets that you remember is when you put a thousand bucks on St. Kilda. By the way around, Frio, I think. Oh, so if and someone, twice. So that, yeah, that's someone when I had to a beat, moment. Someone like a dollar eighteen to beat St. Kilda or whatever. Like eight, a yeah. full-blown certainty. Yeah. And it, you did this. Yeah, and when it, I was like 20, that's when, that's when I literally <laughs> discovered match betting. I was like, fuck this, I'm not betting anymore. And I'm very good at being able to just turn shit off. Yeah. So like... What were you thinking? No, I was, I was, just, I was, it was on my 21st birthday, I remember. I put a thousand dollars on yeah. Freo or something, and I think Ross Lyon rested players or vice versa for St. Kilda. I can't remember. Anyway, they lost, and I didn't yeah. even know it back then. I could have hedged it halfway through the week. He he changed all these players. I probably could have hedged out of the position and lost like one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and just cashed out. But I didn't know that back then. Two weeks, three weeks later, I discovered how to use a bonus, and then fucking why would you gamble anymore? But yeah, yeah. So to have set. those conversations with people, or like even with subs that come across and like, man, like. I had a great week with you guys, but I punted all my bonuses or whatever. And it's like, dude, trust me. Like, I totally understand that. I've been in the same position mm, as you. Yeah. I've been in the position where I've been punting or been at the races and I've been like five, 600 bucks up and I think I'm playing with free money. And this is like, this is why when people watch our videos and they go, fuck, these guys are talking about exactly how I'm feeling or thinking. And it's because, bro, we've done that. Like, we've yeah. been in that exact position. Like, we punted and we know what it's like to win big and to feel like you're on top of the world, like you're on a hot streak and also yeah. to feel like, 
the world's against you and you know oh unlucky. like i can't yeah so unlucky like geez this guy like i remember sending you a few years ago a multi like i can't believe this guy hit the post from the top of the goal square like i'm <laughs> fucking cursed i'm fucking rigged and it's like mate like looking back on it now i'm like you're an idiot tom but yeah. like yeah. in the moment and no. jp was probably like yeah mate like that's we're so all, we're all the same like, like and and it's like you have this um it's definitely done in kruger like you're at the peak of mount stupid you think you know more than you do yeah and at the end of the day you're not unlucky for putting a 15 leg multi on that loses by one leg like the probability was against you from day one. You were lucky to hit 14 leagues. Correct. That's yeah, how you so should be lucky. looking at it. Yeah. And th- that brings us, I want to kind of, obviously we've touched on losing accounts, whatever. If you've got it, losing accounts, if you want to learn how to use them, fucking DM us, whatever. But um, before you move on, before you move on. Yeah. We, we have, so we, we've put a, a like a, a dollar value on, okay. you know, the yeah. value of an account. Sports bet points where you know, particularly the major corporate bookies, from someone who's coming from a losing as a losing gambler. If yep. you're a brand new yeah, um, gambler, man. 18, 9, you know, doesn't matter your age, you've never opened the account, no history on the account. Obviously, it is a lot different. I wouldn't, you're not going to expect to make 20 grand, nah. you know, in your first year off that account alone. Um, you know, it, it is possible over the life of the account to make that much, um, but you're probably looking, you know, at a, at a much more sort of realistic value of about you know probably five grand off the account in your that's first year. yeah completely different ball game and this is where it's massive where like your setup is literally going to determine whether you make a thousand or 500 or 200 or fucking 20 grand yeah literally per account because like if you don't your nail setup. that yeah what do you mean by your setup so this is where like this is our area of expertise at both hustler and the system is literally if you don't nail like for example bookies are going to profile you at the start of your account you open up an account and you start betting on there they're going to know straight up pretty much if you like stereotype punter if you're someone who goes and chucks multis on that are going to lose yeah. or you're someone who's pretty much taking a deposit off or withdrawing the money and fucking off like that's the that's the end of the ends of the spectrum yeah. right or you're a full-on degenerate who goes and puts 500 on a massive multi yeah. and loses to highlight to, to, yeah to highlight how much they profile people and something that really does surprise people when i tell them this is that if you're a girl and you sign up to an account, yeah. they're automatically a lot more suspicious about you. Of course, you. they'll yeah. even try and call you. So yeah. a lot of people, um, not so much in our service, but obviously a lot of people from other match betting or whatever, they'll go and try and use their missus account and they're done within like a week, especially smaller companies. Like yeah. I know um, certain companies like Textbet, I've heard a lot of stories about that happening there and even like Bet Deluxe and stuff um, and Bet Nation, obviously. But the reality is if you do things properly and this is why people get i think so triggered by the fact that um potentially we, we charge 1100 for a defense and sustainability course as well as all the other stuff at the end of the day if you've got your accounts open you can keep making money and you touched on this and you said believe it or not match betting or, or making money off the bookies is the That's easiest easy part so easy, yeah. it is so easy like yeah. you can just go and do like i could show you how to make a thousand dollars in in an hour like just signing up to all these bookies but what's the point of that like if you want to make a grand and lose your account to do it but if you want to make 50 grand over three years do it the other way and the slow way it's tortoise in the hair so every book is different um and when you've got a community of people that are learning off each other and explaining and smashing ideas okay textbet did this bet deluxe did this sports bet did this on my account like then all of a sudden you understand these bookies and how they operate yes we're not inside the companies but these anecdotal kind of understanding of everything helps you to then build your you're essentially trying to build a house doing it the other way, like you're just going rogue and, and just turning over bonuses, doing the minimum to turn over, withdrawing it, smashing promotions, maxing stakes, fucking doing all dumb shit that obviously rookies do, yeah. um, thinking that they've clocked it um, and then they're done within three months. You're, you're building a house without a foundation and mm-hmm. it's just going to look good for like two months and then it's going to fall down versus building foundation and going up and then passing the guy and being alive in three years. Yeah. So it's your call what you want to do, but totally different ball game when your new account versus an existing yeah. one um yeah. but it's still yeah it's 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 still um it's still very profitable and, and yeah. particularly this time of the year purely because yeah there's just so many more promos that are being offered so you just you can simply just blend in easier hit more promos and make more um make more money essentially so but obviously you know we we're talking about you know how to set up your accounts why setting them up is important and the alternative is like if you're going to open up an account you know the alternative to that is that you're going to be gambling right if you're opening up an account and you're not doing it for match betting purposes you're going to be gambling and the alternative to match betting is gambling and we all know that 99.5 percent of gamblers lose and that's kind of a mindset thing that we try to like drill into people when they get come across right obviously we want them to make money at both of our companies but we also want them to change the way they think about punting and 
I think JP's got a pretty good story about somebody that came into our community um, that was a massive, massive gambler and has changed his mindset completely. And maybe you can touch yeah. on that, how that's all worked and I, what's yeah. happened. I'm still pretty like shocked by this one because of how suddenly the change was. Like he only joined, I think it was like start of August. So we're looking at almost two months now, I think a month and a half in. And he, on his first night that he subbed, he was talking to us on Instagram a lot before. He subbed to the system for a month. And he was like a massive gambler coming into it. And then he sent us his bet slip on a Friday night, like before his first day of tipping. And it was like $1,100 fucking 10 leg multi. And we're like, well, this guy needs to be told, like he needs to get his head right before. He he knew though. He he knew it was like. It was, we all like, because we obviously discuss shit in the chat. Like we send each other disgust things between the company. Um, Okay. This guy needs to get addressed, whatever. So we send him personal voice recordings and whatever. But once we told him like, bro, you need to delete that. He like literally just stopped. Um, and fast forward now, five weeks, six weeks in, he's made like two and a half K and it, it's like talking to a different person now. And I, I don't understand that. Yes, we've seen this happen to many people over the time and even people who aren't even subscribers and messaging us on Instagram saying, hey, the shit you talk about, I'm doing. Like it, you fucking hit me. Like I don't want to hear it, but it's true. But I've never seen someone just go click like that bad to there. Cause he was putting like he sent me all these screenshots like three k on a dollar seven to make like fuck all money two hundred bucks or whatever nine k he lost one day on like tennis multis and then now he's messaging me back like last week and I'm actually getting him to make a testimonial video for us and he was saying he actually gets excited now at like winning fucking twenty dollars and I can't understand that because what happens as humans as we get and see more money as we grow up it's you get become desensitized to money right. If you were earning $500 as a teenager, that's fucking, you're, you're literally making millions, right? When you get to like 30, $500 is nothing. So I've never seen someone go from getting like fully not sensitized, to like putting 9K on something to then get excited. Like it's like reverse sensitization. Yeah. So kudos to him, well done. But I just thought it was awesome. Like it's really good to hear I that. I think for like a lot of people, what they don't realize is that, you know, maybe if they look at our results or even not, even they look at any other person's results, I see someone win 100, 300, 500 services, right? Made a couple units here or there. For them, they might not think it's a lot of money. But like when you consider that you stop losing the money yeah. that you're losing on the punt, which maybe for this guy, because we get a lot of DMs. And as you said, I do a lot of the DMs. And a lot of people are like, fuck, man, I listen to your podcast or, you know, I've seen your results. I'm so sick of losing. And when you guys talk about multis or talk about that mindset, that's exactly how I think and feel. And it's like, yeah, bro, like we, we know we've been there. And also once you stop losing, it, it's, it's so nice. Like you lose the stress, yeah. you lose the anxiety, you get so much more time back. You're not checking the results of all these games that you have multis on. You're not, you know, betting on tennis overnight, yeah. waking up, praying, and when you stop losing, if you're losing 50, 100 bucks a week, even if you can afford to lose it, right? If you stop losing that, there, there's your fucking, you know, there's your five grand a year mm. that you were losing well, that, the, you've, yeah. that you've now made, that you've got access to. Yeah, and it becomes a double whammy, which you speak about the graphs going in opposite direction. But I, I reckon that's underrated, talking about the stress and the kind of anxiety talk, around yeah. fucking gambling. Because like... You then have to hide it from your missus. You then have to hide it from your mum or your dad. You don't want to talk about it with your mates. You, you feel like you only, like you hold it in and yeah, it just or you, builds or up. Or you're like, you're punting all day Saturday. You lose a bit too much. So you're not going to go and have beers with yeah. your mates Saturday night because you don't have enough money. Yeah, well, there used to be like, an ATM. This is fucking the pokey uh, ad with the guys carrying an ATM around, uh, a pokey machine around with him or an ATM. And it's just like, you're carrying that with you, your social life. And then mm. it impacts your decisions. Yeah, well, you're sitting at the pub like it's Saturday night. You've yeah. lost a fair bit on the punt. You're sitting at the pub Saturday night and you're watching the footy games like all your mates are sitting there having a laugh, having a beer, and you're like intently watching the footy game because yeah. you've got a same gamer on yeah. that you need to hit because you've yeah. lost so much money today. Or well, you've like, tried to triple your money to turn get like back imagine your if you just imagine like you could that. just remove that and you hadn't lost that money. Yeah, well, you don't have to imagine it. Just like obviously start making the steps towards doing that, and there's a number of ways to do that. You don't have to subscribe to us, but simply like just keeping a, a accountability like on yourself. Um, and tracking I tracking your bets. Yeah, like firstly tracking your bets, but even dumbing it down even simpler to this i said this last week like make yourself a challenge right delegate an amount that you know you can afford to lose for your punting um whether that be a weekly amount or whether that be an amount that you're not going to touch for two three four months whatever divide that by 100 and only bet that amount every time you make a bet so let's say you want to delegate 500 dollars for the next three months punting or for the next month let's say be a bit more and divide that by 100 it's five dollars put five dollars only on those bets, Any bet you, place. you have to lose a hundred bets 
to obviously to lose all that money. Yeah. And if you do that dumb, like if you do 100 bets in a weekend, obviously you're going to lose your 500. But most people are not going to place 500 bets in a weekend. No, but see, see, the thing is... is oh, sorry, 100 bets. It doesn't matter. Even if even if people did place 500 bets over the weekend, they're, they're going to win, you know... Some probability wise, like yeah, unless obviously we're three or four, four maybe five thousand. Well, depends like what, multis. depends on the odds depends, of what they're doing. Yeah, assuming they're just like punting on the horses, like you know, not doing stupid multi yeah, and stuff like that. They're most likely not going to lose five hundred. But they're not going to lose five hundred, so they're going to get a return. Yes. And so that sensibly, like that's that's literally that, that's the benefit of doing it. And I really like that point that you made. Um, is that you know pick that unit size because what people do at the moment is they will go, I've got a hundred dollars to punt this yeah. weekend, right? And they'll go and put 30 bucks on the first race and then they'll put 40 bucks on the next race and then they'll put, what's that, 30 bucks on the next race and then they've lost their 100. All of a sudden, yeah. if, you're, if you're finding yourself like blowing your, your, yeah, blowing your betting capital by race three or just blowing your betting capital at all, ever, then you have incorrect structure. You should never, ever, that is the whole yeah. purpose of why we like say, you know, delegate one to 2% of your unit size based on your capital because in that way based off our service obviously every service is different you should never theoretically ever blow your betting capital no. you should never bottom you out you should never come close to that because yeah. what, this is literally what the bookies don't want you to hear because they they know anyone betting knows that you're not losing because you're a shit you, you, like anyone can hit flip coins and tip 50-50 right mm. that, literally 50-50 result obviously the bookies have a little edge you, you hit 50-50 yeah. you're going to lose long term most likely depending on what odds you're doing but if you're you're not losing because of that, you're losing because your first bet is thirty, it wins, and it, it's a five dollar pop. You got one hundred and fifty now plus your your seventy left over. You got two twenty. Your next bet is a hundred, yeah, which is three times three and a bit times your first bet. It's emotion. So, so now it's yeah, like it destroys you. Literally, like you're betting based on how you feel and based on what the result of the last bet is. You may as well just put it in the bin. Yeah. Whereas, okay, I'm gonna bet five dollars. I have five hundred dollars. I'm gonna bet five dollars. No more. No less. Every time. It's the emo- it's the emotion that just destroys everybody because like even if you go yeah. in like yeah I've got a hundred bucks to lose this week like Steve said if you hit the winner on the first one or you put thirty percent of your bankroll on your first bet and it wins happy days but no one's sitting there going all right you know my hundred's gone like no one even like even as like the most sensible punter I think I'm quite conservative and even if I used to do that and if I had hit my first bet like that I would instantly take the hundred dollars that I put into the account out of the account so at the end of the day at least I knew that I was like I didn't lose any money, right? And this is the mindset some punters will have. But what you need to consider is all that money that's in your betting account now is all yours. It's still your money. You have the ability to go like this, put mm. it in your bank account and walk away. Yeah. So when you think you're playing with free money or you're yeah. on a hot streak or you know this money, it doesn't matter because it wasn't there at the start of the day. You need to change that because you have an ability in that point in time to be like, you know what? I now have 220. I started with 100. I'm taking all the 220 because it's mine, putting in my bank account. This is yeah. something that people seriously, seriously disagree on. It's like, yeah, yeah, I hundred percent. I've, I've had I've, arguments with my mates about this. I've had arguments with people it's too, fucked. and it, it's so, so infuriating. Like, people cannot change their timeline of like they put money in at this point, and it's not their money until it is taken out. It's like there's the start; they no, no, put no. their hundred dollars. The end point is the end point when they remove the money, and it's only at those points on outside or before the start and after the end people think that it's your money. It is your money all the way through the process. And it doesn't matter if you put in a hundred dollars and then you win a hundred and fifty dollars, now you've got two hundred and fifty dollars and you take out a hundred, it doesn't mean that that one fifty isn't your money because yeah. it's still sitting in your betting account. Yeah, yeah. it's you, still you, your money. Yeah, you you want it. It's like yours. It's, yours. it's yeah. literally the under your name. You. The bookie has given it to you. If you were at a, if you were in a in a tab, you know, like in a venue and yes. you went and cashed the ticket, you would have got $250 on a bet slip piece of paper. You would have then gone to the cash register, gone, can I have this $250, turned it into cash, and then you would have gone, oh, $150, like, this is my money. Yeah, and people, that's... Like, people seriously disagree, even big, in financial terms, yeah, like investing, yeah, yeah, like people are the same. Non-selling losses and, and not yeah. taking a loss, whatever, because yeah. it's not a loss till you sell it, but it's all the same principle. But I think the online aspect of this and the digitalness of money desensitizes, or de, not desensitize, but de respects money i guess because it's not it's, it's just, just a number on the screen, screen. Yeah. exactly yeah um the other thing with emotion is like when it plays on the way that you're betting like if you have a win whatever the other way that it plays on it, and i see this all the time and i fucking hate it like i wish i always bite my tongue but i wish i couldn't and i wish i would just always comment on it when i see people say that they're due or tell somebody else that they're due like yeah. You need like to take I a wanna, I reckon you need to start. I don't want to like people. attack people, but like the reality is, what are you due for? Yeah. Like you don't have an edge. You don't know how you're picking them. You have no structure. You have no 
set bankroll. What, like, what are you due for? Just because yeah. you've lost 10 in a row, you're going to lose 50 in a row. The bookie makes, you know, five, six, yeah. seven billion dollars a year. Yeah. And that's because every single person that places the next bet, everyone thinks they're due. Yeah. And you know what? The only person that's due is the bookie. And no, they're, they're not clean, due. They'll, no. they're, they're, and they just clean win. Up. Just <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> like thinking that you're due, again, if you're somebody that's sitting there betting and you're like, fuck me, I haven't, you know, even if you're only losing what you can lose and you just keep doing it every week, you, just because you keep doing it, it does not mean you're any closer yeah. to a winner. If you don't know what you're doing, yeah. you're just giving away your money. It's why the bookies make billions of dollars a year. It's why the bookies encourage you to punt, to put on multis. Yeah. To, it's why they show you all these fucking ads. They're not doing that because the, you're due. I fucking hate it. Like you sent me a screenshot. I'm not even going to say what it was on Saturday night because it's going to make people like it's that elite marketing that even if I was to say how stupid it is, people will go and do it. And it's the multi that fucking the million dollar thing that you sent through. And it's just like people seeing the, the hope or the potential of that being them automatically just sells it for him like yeah it's the hope and and then like there's a guy on, on twitter who we all know we've spoken about many times before and a lot of people think we've got it in for him but the reality is we're not attacking him but it's been like four, five months now since he's had a collect and everyone's in the comments saying today's the day today's the yeah day. good today luck. for what thank you for posting it yeah any anything's good i, I like it's thank what you what do you like, like today you like... must be a good bloke because you're posting it and Steve, what's this, the thing yeah. about the mechanic? Like, would you go fucking... Yeah. Well, this is this is one that is frustrating, is that he does... This guy gets a lot of positive feedback um, for, for being a good bloke. Everyone thinks that he's like, he's helping them out by offering... What's he offering? He's Nothing. Pick, he's picking... Random he, tips, mate. He, he might know something about horses, but, you know, based off, you know, what we've seen and based off his, his history, he just looks like another average guy who just built up a bit of a following... He's not a good bloke by offering tips to people that in an unstructured matter with no accountability, with no responsibility for what he is doing there. This is what it does irritate me. I saw another post a couple of weeks ago where a guy was in one of those big Facebook groups <laughs> and he was like 50,000 members in it. Um, woke, you know, the woke probably, guy. Hey? The woke guy. The woke guy, yeah. He was, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, he was revolutionary. He was going to change the way the betting groups are going to work on Facebook. And all of a sudden... He was saying this post like, oh, what I want everyone in here to do is start putting out winning tips. We're going to bring back winning tips, you know, and I don't want people charging people for it. They're going to be free tips and we're just going to look out for each other because we're going to be a good bloke. And let's first, I just want to break it down. Like in this guy's post, you know, he, the definition of a good bloke is we want everyone here to start winning together, right? That's what he means by let's be a good bloke. Yeah, he's got yeah? good intentions. He's got good intentions. He's like, I want everyone here to start winning. And, he, and if we look at the definition of the good bloke equals we want people to start winning, then offering unstructured tips with no responsibility, no accountability. It's the absolute opposite the, of being a good bloke. It's the no, opposite. And this is like my first ever, second ever viral TikTok was rinsing the bets with, bet with mates and not even knowing what I was doing. I don't even know how to use TikTok, but I pretty much just said, what makes you think that if you get nine other losing punters out of your mates, you're going to start winning? Like, you're just going to lose more. Yeah. And, and Sportsbet and Dabble and all those companies have literally... It's so smart. They've literally nailed the social aspect, which obviously encourages... The I guy wrote a, a linked article too. about well, yeah, fucking... Yeah, in that article, it actually said that, like, the stereotype. Males, males together are yes. more likely to take risk. Of so course, if brilliant. we're all in a group together... And you're like, oh, come on, let's put another 50 in. I don't want to look like the, the soft cop yeah. or the pussy for not putting another 50 yeah. in. It's so, fucking genius. Oh, yeah, we'll all put another 50 in. It doesn't matter. And like, it's such a great way for them to just keep, keep making money out of you. Sick of punting on your own or it's a bit, you know, degenerate activity to sit at home and punt on your own. At least I'll be social. We'll all put 50 bucks in and yeah. we'll all put a multi on and, together And if instead. you're not part of it, you're like, you're, yeah, you're, you get you're the serious you're a, kind yeah, of you're like... you're a loser. Yeah. You're, not, you're not fun at parties. Yeah, exactly. It's, pressure. it's literally like toxic peer pressure. Yeah, and... Yeah. Um, then when you say that to people, they just fucking rinse you because like, like they think it's. But yeah. where's the where's the logic in this guy? You give me a free tip and it loses. Ha, like where is the logic in that? Your your being a good bloke. Like I don't understand. Because I the tried logic to make there. you win, man. Yeah, because he but tried. But you didn't. Yeah, but hang on. What if you paid me thirty bucks and I said I'll make you money over like twelve months? Yeah, but no one would do that. Why? Oh, you're a shit bloke, man. You're because shit. I have to. Because I'm you, charging. I have to give you money. But I'm gonna make you money, and if I nah, don't, I'll refund you. No, but you're a shit bloke. Well, like that's. But that's where we're at. Yeah, because I don't understand that. It's a combination of like ego. It's a combination of wanting to do it yourself. It's a combination of getting this idea that you think you know more than you do. It's everything, like, and then you combine that with the social aspect of it, and it's fucked. Tell us a story. You mentioned it about the oh. chick on the train because that yeah. was fucked. Yeah. So this is this is yeah. This oh. shows where we're at. 
this shows where we're at. Like one thing, you know, that you mentioned a lot was, you know, emotion. Emotion is what, you know, really hurts us um, and really impacts gamblers. But something that I think particularly with the newer generation, the younger generation, um, I actually just don't think they know how, t- they don't even know what betting is essentially. I don't actually think they realize what they're doing what it actually all means, what needs to happen for them to win. As silly as this sounds, I think there's like there's definitely missing a, a, something there and there's something that's lacking in potentially education. I don't know, that's another topic. But anyway, I was on the, on the train the other day going to the footy. A couple of girls, they wouldn't have been much older than 18, um, sitting on the train talking about their multi. And I'm, I was just like, oh God. Like wanted to, I wanted to like chirp up and be like, do you actually know what you're doing here? Like this, you're not going to win doing this. Like this is silly, you know give him a sub whatever but in, <laughs> like this this girl I, I decided not to but this girl um you know she's just talking she's like i've got my multi on it's got 14 legs is that enough and it's just like oh it's just it's like it's, it is it's frustrating it's like it really yeah. shows why why all of a sudden is it all about you can't just put a bet on now you got to put a bet on with 14 legs and it's almost like if you don't put you know a certain number of legs then it's not cool enough it's not that's not deemed acceptable form of betting what is well, it well that shows where we're at in terms of knowledge and dunning kruger competence versus confidence competence being how much you know and people just don't know how to bet or what to bet or that is just being ingrained through the marketing to fully legitimately hypnotize punters and mm. they just do what is is like oh my god fucking multis well same after, game, our, same after our multis podcast we got so much feedback around holy fuck like i'd never actually thought about it when i put a five leg multi on i need to get five winners yeah mm. and like when we said in the podcast like how often do you back five winners in a row and most people will be like oh fucking never yeah. hardly ever it's like well that should be the light bulb moment that's what a multi is like if you're putting 10 legs on yeah. you need to back 10 winners in a row to get a collect and if you get to so the if you back leg, nine winners and you don't get the 10th one You've just got nine winners for no collect. Yeah, and and you get to the ninth one, and there's a tenth leg to come. You've got your whole st- like the, yeah, the yeah. return divided by the last leg on that last mm. fucking. And that's leg. the part that other people didn't understand. They're like, "Oh, I've got five bucks on it. I'm only losing five bucks." And it's like, bro, if you get four or five legs deep into a five or six leg multi, yeah, you've got all the accumulated winnings on that last leg. Yeah. and in your right mind, if that was cash in your account, there's no chance you're going to put all that on the last leg. And that's what. Steve's alluding to these people that are putting 14 leg multis on they don't understand what they're doing yeah no. well deal or no deal we got absolutely hammered well you did you made yeah. a video about the cash out of a multi that you found um, I think Carlton to make the finals yeah it was there was like the cash out value was 350 the the payout was 900 or something and they needed like, I can't oh, remember bit, the final it, was. yeah like even yeah it was a bit more but then they yeah, compared that yeah. to deal or, deal or no deal being um hundred thousand two hundred thousand yeah. and everyone in the comments like the principle of what you were talking about is legit legit legitimately exactly yeah. the same but you were just copping fucking oh no bro it's not the same it's not life-changing and all this and it's yeah. like you have literally just been fully like conned brainwashed. by and brainwashed literally yeah. and and this is where we're at like and people don't even know they've been brainwashed because everyone's doing it. But like, you, you know what's funny is that, that was a classic comment, the life-changing comment. It's like, yeah. well, I wouldn't cash out a multi where I could get 400 and if I could potentially win 900, but I would cash out $100,000 exactly. when I could potentially get $200,000 because $100,000 is life-changing. 400 isn't life-changing, may as well let it ride. That was, that was I reckon it'd be 80% of people would have that exact same. Probably yeah. more. Probably more. Possibly, yeah, possibly. But <laughs> what's life-changing? You give you give four hundred and fifty like this is gonna sound really silly. You give four hundred and fifty dollars to a one year old. That's life changing for a one year old. Hundred thousand dollars isn't life changing. You're simply just getting caught up with yeah. the feeling of the money. Like you, we t- we talk about this, you attach a feeling to yes. money. And it's like money. This this certain amount of money is going to make you react a different way. You're gonna behave yeah. a different way depending on the the amount of it. You should treat every single dollar the same. It doesn't matter Spot if it's up. one or a hundred thousand dollars. And then you'll, you'll, that's when you start getting emotionless. That's when you start betting with structure yeah. in a controlled environment where you're not going to let any, any, any result, any value of money impact your behavior afterwards. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, a thousand bucks, for example, if that guy could win a thousand bucks if he's multi wins, but you can take 350 now and you don't have to worry about it. Like, how much do you factor in the stress, the anxiety before the game, watching the whole game? Yeah. And if it loses, if you're going to be, yeah. first of all, if it loses, you're going to be shattered. And second of all, most people after it loses, they'll they'll think that they were that close, so they'll go again. Yeah. And it's like if a thousand bucks you would have taken it, but you wouldn't have taken three fifty. If you take three fifty three times, you've got more than a thousand bucks. 
and there's no gambling required. There's no luck. There's no relying on a certain outcome. And this is, yeah, as you said, like it's just value of money. Hundred bucks is a hundred bucks. A thousand dollars is a hundred dollars. Just ten times. Like yeah. all you got to do is keep accumulating. And this is what we say to like subscribers or people that start match betting. All you have to do is it's just it's a compounding effect. You just start accumulating your profit. It's the same as going to the gym. You're not going to get a six pack or you know you can't bench press a hundred kilos. The first time you go to the gym, mm. you're only going to be able to bench press 40 or 50. Sure, that's not life-changing. You're not a big Hulk Hogan, whatever. But if you roll into the gym for a year and do that, then you're going to be able yeah. to bench press 100 kilos. Then you are the guy that's benching 100 and you look like a king. Yeah. But you know that guy didn't get there overnight. And it's the same with these punters or these match betters that make 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks, 1,000, 2,000 bucks every week. It doesn't start like that. You have to learn the skills. You have to learn the discipline. And like, you have to just keep showing up realistically think about it so like if you're going to if you're like you know obviously we've all basically we all basically live off this industry now um you know obviously i'm i've got a separate job as well but you know you two particularly basically live off this industry so it's borderline you know you could say that you know it's been somewhat life-changing to some degree for both of you i'd, I'd say it has like it's changed your life you know? oh, mate my life has been betting for fucking nearly 10 years yeah, spot on so and think about it like realistically if your life is going to change from betting from beating the bookies from being a professional analyst whatever it may be whatever it is within the field how do you think you're going to get there you have one of two options one you're going to win a massive life-changing pay payout in one hit yeah or are you going to slowly grind over time like any other career you are ever ever going to succeed at you're never going to launch into any career yeah. and be on top of the, the mountain from day one. So what makes you think you're going to do it within the gambling yeah, you're not going well, to be the, I think the easiest way, and I actually thought about how I could put this in an example, right? And let's just use Tats Lotto as the example because to hit a huge multi, like a life-changing multi, it's exactly probably the same probability of you winning Tats Lotto, right? Yeah. So who's going to be better off? Like if you think logically over the next 30 years, if I spent $20 every single week buying a Tats Lotto ticket, versus you who puts $20 into a savings account every week. In 30 years, who do you think is going to have more money? Just in that scenario. Well, obviously the savings. So, but how many people do you think watching this or how many gamblers do you think, well, that guy has 30 years at a chance of winning mm. Tats Lotto? How many people do you think think that? Like would actually believe that they well, would Well, most people will think no, that. No. And the reality is the person putting $20 away is always going yeah. to be better off. That's the mindset yeah, of well, people that are Yeah, I think 20 bucks is probably like even... A, if you said a hundred, then people would be more likely to see that the savings is a bit more because it's more, but they need to understand that it's all the same thing. Yeah. Like it's the same amount, whether you put a dollar in your savings or a dollar in the tats lot or a thousand in the tats lot. Yeah, yeah but the thousand. theory more is like, you know, someone might put a $20 multi on every week to try and win hundred K. Exactly. But what you need to understand is, is only one person or two people will win tats lotto. And um, that's what they'll sell. They'll sell that idea. Yeah, but you're not going to be that person. No, of course. And not. when you see old mate win $600,000 on Twitter, 999,999 out of the million didn't win that multi. But even following that, right? So yeah, correct. No one else so, won that multi. And okay, so now you're following him. You've been following him for four months. There hasn't been a collect anywhere near that. Exactly. There's probably been two collects that were profit and the rest are, you know. So when when do you go, okay, holy fuck, maybe this guy was, maybe that was a complete fluke. Like at what, do you have to go broke? Do you have, like what, at what <laughs> No, but he's still point? due. He's stupid. No, but honestly, like that's the mindset, and, and that he he's betting the way he bets because he won that bet. Yeah, if you win Tats Lotto, he fully believes that is the way to win. Correct, because he won. And if I win Tats Lotto tomorrow, would you start following me? No, no, because mm. I fucking put my ticket in and I won, and I'm fucking yeah. one in a million. We've, we've talked me, about this in a past podcast. Numbers. People do though. Like we're, we're yeah, but we're, fuck, like <laughs> wake up, man. You're not plus yeah, six hundred thousand. Right. Like when someone yeah. wins Tats Lotto, yeah. everyone goes to yeah, where they want. Correct, they want but it. that's it another thing. Up. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, fucking that's... gambler's fallacy, right? Yeah, yeah. That's nothing to do with Tats Lotto. Is like even different to gambling because, like, it's it's as in betting for um like on horses and whatever. Yeah. But this guy is betting because he knows he's massively up. Yeah. He'd be he would have lost. I'm not going to say, but he, we've been tracking and and it's at least. 10, but you don't, 20, even, you, don't 30, even to, you don't even need to speculate. Like we just know, no. the bookies know, the math the suggests way that, that if you bet like yeah. that and you've been betting like that for 30 years, even if you win 500 grand, you're probably at break even at yeah, best. And, and how you just, how you see that and the bookies haven't banned him. They're giving him fucking bonuses. Yeah, yeah, so like, explain that. Like if yeah. you've got a punter that's taken 600K off a bookie, they fucking, why would you give him a bonus if he's a profitable punter? So this is the thing as well. Like the environment that we're in now, <laughs> Um, you know, influencers, influencers yeah. have a massive fuck. They, they have a massive pull on people, right? There are people that will 
know who these guys are and I, I used to not want to be able to want to name him but I'm going to name him like everybody that punts or is on TikTok or whatever they're going to know who this Simo bloke is right if they're mm. on Instagram they're going to know who Simo is and uh, we have nothing personally against Simo don't really know him as a human being but there are people that follow him or think he's a god because and other people in the people that do this in like crypto markets and shit as well they post this lavish lifestyle right you know I'm out here sink and pierce I've got a massive house I've got all this money I've got all these cars posting all these winning bet slips, you know, life's good, right? Um, and this is what sucks in so many people that are losing on the punt and they're like, fuck, if I just bet like this guy, if I just hit this bet slip that he did, you know, I'll start making money. And this is feeding into why people just keep losing, keep losing. It's these guys that are posting bet slips that have no idea what they're doing that are just feeding off people that yeah. are losing punters. And you got to remember, generally these people, some people it's more obvious than others, but probably more likely than not, they're getting an income or a yeah. revenue somewhere, whether they're selling their own tips or they're yeah, getting affiliate. paid advertisement yeah, or they've yeah. got affiliates or they're selling a course somewhere within their sort of value chain, they're making money. Well, that's fine if they're profitable. If they're profitable. We, we do the same thing. We're making a Correct. living off selling a service or a course. Yeah. But the fucking thing has track results and it wins. And if it doesn't, you get refunded. Yeah. And we're, so, but we're also not like, you know, well, we're in suits today just to get a bit more legitimacy. Yeah, like we're but, now <laughs> legitimate. Like but, fully. <laughs> But like we're not rolling around like posting bed slips going fucking look at this lads you know mm. another winner yeah. like you don't if you're marketing like that it's very and, clear and but obvious that's what, what works you're doing. that's unfortunately that yes. is what works and if you want to con people post slips and green ticks mm. um, there's a guy on TikTok called Punters Hub who's had to create his second account because he basically has been posting like his bet slips and he's hit one or two every, like but he's he's lost massive and they got they get deleted but he's he's putting AMG videos up. Um, obviously he's made money or has money in other ways and then it's, it's not hard to work out what bets win and what don't but going back to Simo unfortunately I'm just going to full on just tell it as it is here he deletes everything on his socials every slip and this is what he hides behind so he'll put up a slip on his story a slip not a uh, sorry a tip which hasn't won yet it will have one leg out of two whatever these remember this is how you have to think right he wouldn't be putting up bets that don't win okay of course not so don't just see that. Think about the whole picture here. So why would you post something that lost immediately? For first leg out of three losers, you're not posting it. Mm. So assume there's more losses there. You then see the one that's one out of two legs. He put one up the other week, fucking horse one, and then it's got Brisbane to win the premiership. <laughs> it's like, it's a fucking year away. And it's got year of the lion 2023. It's like, and all these people are commenting like, yeah, chockies and all this. I mean, shut the fuck up. Like you're getting conned. <laughs> By someone who has no fucking idea what he's doing. There is no public results. And today I commented on a thing and I said, hey, do you have public results? He goes, yeah, in the member section. Simo, we've got a member in our community that's a member there. And the results said, 2021 AFL, 100 units profit. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. it. No, no, no tips, tips, no, tips, no, no, no tips. spreadsheet, 100 units. Exactly 100. <laughs> well, exactly 100. That's hard to do. 2022 results, TBA. They're yeah, coming. Like... And recently, he's, he launched a finals package. He had to refund the people who asked for the refund. He didn't Where are profit. the results for that? No results. Anyone who asked got refunded, but only those who asked. And that brings me to the next problem. And that wasn't a go at Simo. It's a go at anyone who doesn't have public results. If you want to run a service, if you want to be an influencer, post your fucking uh, results. Look, oh, yeah, all right. It's, it's, it's a go at them as well. But it's also wake up to the people who buy Correct. from these people. Exactly. Hold them accountable and ensure that Just they are doing what they should yeah. do to earn your money. Because otherwise, you're literally just giving money to another Joe Blow who's got no bloody idea. Yeah. Look, we're not the best horse analysts in the in the no. world. We never claim to be. We never claim to be smarter than anyone. Blah, 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 blah. Correct. But we do do everything by the book. Everything's legitimate. Everything's transparent. Everything's honest. You know exactly what you're going to get. We like to think. If you don't think, let, give us you some can watch our improve. fucking results as yeah. we input them before the race ends. And mm. if you delete it, there's all the subs can see it. Well, yeah. like we've got five thousand tips in two years. Yeah. But so yeah. So just just. Ask yourself, all right, is this actually a legitimate Just have results. Yeah, and if yeah. it doesn't have results, it's most likely not a profitable service. Yeah. So we've actually got someone tracking his results and the spreadsheet is d disgusting. Like we're actually tracking not only the, the paid tipping results, but we're posting, we're tracking the ones on the story that get deleted. There was a horse on Sandown. He had a multi to win 900. I've made a video out of, out of it. I'm going to show people how to actually... What he should have done, he was supposed to hedge. He could have guaranteed himself like three or four hundred dollars, five hundred bucks, whatever. I can't remember what the thing was. I'll post that. But then that gets deleted. The video. What was the horse? 
That oh, lost. He, he did like two at Sandown. He was like, it was he, before Zaki, pin, Zaki, before, Zaki. He did one, yeah, he did and then Zaki, pinstripe. lost. And then he's like, all right, lads, everything you've got on pinstripe, lost, lost. deleted. And then didn't say anything else and then posted another story after the last at Sandown one, fifty. He's like, you beauty boys. But like, how could anyone yeah. bet on that if they'd already loaded up on Correct. Zaki, lost, put everything they had on pinstripe, lost, and now he's and in a $1. fifty winner. Like, It's just, I don't care. If, like, I've, I've spoken to Sim on the phone for two and a half hours and... <laughs> I don't know him personally, but he, he unfortunately wants to make money off tipping. And good on him if he's making people money. We, we make a living off, making, off, off tipping, but we only do that because we win. And if you're not doing it and you know you're losing and you're pretending that you're winning, yeah, then that's, unfortunately that's you have to be it. held accountable. And yeah, I just want to get out here and, and, and protect people from that rubbish. And he's not the only one. There's a fucking chick on Insta or TikTok, uh, Twitter, sorry. Who started? She's an ex-jockey who's posting their tits basically, and and is that the only fans one? Yeah, there's yeah, a couple. Yeah. Of, there's called tips and tits, and and it's all this random, like combining like sex and the male brain with gambling, and it's just like genius marketing. Just but basically trying to exploit. It's, yeah, it's clear just that, people who are it? silly yeah. and and want to get involved with that kind of thing, but just have public results. And if you do, and you know they have public results, check them. And if they don't, then fucking don't subscribe because you're gonna lose. The other thing that you say, like you know, when you're watching something, think about it. The other clear one is like you know when you're watching. And we spoke about this, the Brownlow, right? And Nathan Brown pops up and goes, oh, you know, Queen's birthday, Clayton Oliver got the medal, had a blinder, he's $1.90 for best on, like, geez, looks like value here. This is, you know, something I'd be backing. And then the next round, Clayton Oliver doesn't get three. Like, if somebody's working for the bookies, right? Just please logically think about this. If they are working for the bookies and they're giving you a multi or they're telling you the best bet of the round or this guy's going to get three votes, do you think that that guy that gets paid by the bookies wants you to win? Mm. and anybody that says yes unfortunately you have rocks in your head yeah. and if you say no then why the fuck are you betting on what they're telling you to bet on why would you not do the complete opposite to what they tell you because it's Nathan Brown yeah he's, he nearly won a, he would have won a brown if he didn't do his yeah, uh, leg yeah best player for 12 weeks whenever it was but yeah. they're not they're not getting some like professional math nerd who's got all the statistics to yeah go, who goes don't hey, put them all nah, down nah. yeah they're not, they're not getting someone who well, like is an expert in that field it's funny you say that I was watching the racing on the weekend um, obviously we, we tip every weekend and I had it on channel I think 78 Seven, yeah, which yeah, I never yeah. normally do and old mate Daisy has become a horse fucking yeah. analyst yeah yeah Daisy Thomas analyzing the market. He's telling everyone what to bet on because the the money in the background with all the computer screens. Cleaned all up these Carlton fucking, now. He's cleaning up the book. Literally, apparently. like telling people what they should bet on based on the market, and it's like, it, like points bet have really stepped up their game in the ads. I've seen they're copying sports bet. They're putting all this funny content out on Facebook and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, points are trying to do the same as well. Yeah, points and obviously got the inspired unemployed. You know those like yeah, top yeah, and dude. Shaq. And yeah, Shaq, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> don't worry, they'll Mikey be they'll be. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be they'll be getting their whack as well. Don't worry. Like, yeah, yeah. We'll take I them all. Yeah, they should. But no, I have got a question t- to stop rinsing people and kind of provide some perspective. Would you or have you ever considered becoming a bookie? Yeah. Start with Steve. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we we get asked this, don't we? Um, yeah. This. What? <laughs> yeah. This this it really depends. I guess you can have it from sort of multiple different perspectives. Um, and. Yeah, I'll answer one. I'll, I'll let Tom answer it from the yeah. other perspective. But if you're, it depends what your what your motives are. I suppose if you've got a motive of just you know looking to get through life and make you know whatever it takes, hashtag whatever it takes, like make as much profit as possible. Just only worry about the triple bottom line. Don't worry about anything else yeah. and become a bookie. Yeah. Bookie is an absolute cash cow because there's that many losing degenerate gamblers out there. You know, from all different with all different you know, emotional problems or inability to, that they're chasing, chasing losses or they're, you know, they're escaping something or they're bored or whatever. There's so many people and obviously we, we come across these people a lot. Um, and there's, it, unfortunately, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people are completely unaware about. You know, so many people who, particularly I talk to, you know, friends, family, whatever, I, I get, obviously we're very passionate about, you know, the yeah. damage that the bookies do to people. Um, and that's because we see it. We see it firsthand, the yeah. effect that people you know, gambling has. I mean, you look at Favola, he was a classic example who's now become, you know, an influencer, which is another story. But, you know, we get bet slips all the time, that Johnny Drogan guy you were talking about. We had a guy on Instagram recently who lost a stack. Like we see the effect that this has on people and, you know, who's profiting off this? The bookies. Their triple bottom line would be just phenomenal. And I think I did read somewhere like, sports bets, I can't remember exactly, but I do, one I do remember is they spent the, the yeah. marketing the marketing budget across corporate bookmakers last year was 390 million or something like that. 
390 million just for their marketing team. If you just like extrapolate that out and imagine how much therefore revenue and profit they're making if they're yeah. spending 400 million on just marketing, that is absurd. So yes, I would 100% become a bookie. However, like obviously this isn't my opinion. This isn't my belief. I would never become a bookie um, playing devil's advocate. But you know, if you're here to make money, then well, it's, a, it's a fair industry particularly yeah. the way it's trending at the moment. I think it's doubled since since the it's last fucked. decade or something like that. But what about you, Tom? Well, it's like, yeah, well, we get the comment a lot, like, you guys are no better than the bookies. <laughs> like, you're just, you're just mm. preying on vulnerable gamblers. Now, the first part is wrong. The second part is correct. Preying on vulnerable degenerates is exactly what the bookies do. And would we, like, as Steve said, would I like to have the bottom line of the bookies? Would I like to make five billion bucks a year? Sure, I would love to. But... How are they making that money? And the reality is they're making that money off people, right? Yeah. When we make money, the way that our communities make money and our companies make money is we make people money. And if they make money, we make money. Everybody is making money. That's how it's built. That's what the community is built on. We want everybody to make money. We're not here just to make revenue, right? We're not here chasing, you know, a thousand signups. We could make our subscription fucking five bucks a week and we could get 5,000 people in... No- at no time at all, right? And that would make us more money, but we're not interested in that. We want to get people in our community that want to learn, that want to make money and want to change like the way that they think about punting. So that's what we do here. But the bookies, the only way the bookies make money, and this is what you have to think, the only way the bookies make money is they take money off punters and put it in their pocket. We take money from punters and they make money. And if we don't make money, we refund people. And we did have to refund fucking 28 people 24, a, yeah, 24, a, a month yeah. ago because we had a losing 30-day period, right? So we put our money where our mouth is. We're here to make you money and we're here to make our community money. And if we don't, we refund people. That's how it works. The bookie purely makes money yeah. from you. Purely a zero-sum So game. if everybody stopped yeah. gambling, the bookie would make yeah. no money. Yeah. But because everybody's gambling and everybody's losing, that's why the bookie makes so much money. And that's why we're completely different. If we don't make people money, we don't make money. And we are invested and passionate. You can hear Steve speak the way you guys speak. We're passionate about changing the way you think about punting and helping you understand that what you're doing is wrong. And this is how you can make money doing what we do. And we collect a small fee off that because we spend hours and hours doing, you know, voice recording, speaking to people on the phone, making sure that everything is set up correctly so that when you join, you know exactly what's required from you. You go through the two and a half hours worth of videos. You get personalized voice message if you've got any questions. And you're set up to make a consistent profit month on month. And that's why we're very different to the bookies. And would I like to make $5 billion a year? Sure. But would I like to make it in a setting where I know that every single dollar that I make is because somebody else has lost it? No, that isn't for no, me. And I mean... <laughs> This is the other thing, affiliates as well. Um, they're like kind of a bookie without having the risk. So they're not ga- like copying bets from other people. Mm. They're just essentially, I'll, I'll sign up Steve. And um, if Steve loses 5K this year, I get 25% of it, of his losses. And there are people out there that literally make a living off this. And th- these are the kind of guys, maybe not like your Nathan Browns and that, but they're like full on influencers that will have like a link in and their bio. And we easily or, do this. Yeah. yeah. And this is the thing like I want to talk about probably like three years ago when we started Hustler. Me and Kiro like, uh, like started understanding what affiliation was and we were kind of, bro, look how much money we can make. Like, this is fucked. And then I just took a step back and we both said like, look, man, like, do we really want to go down that path? And we're like, straight away, no. And we, we uh, were talking to an affiliate in Brisbane who has essentially lived off this um, and he's probably made a couple of hundred thousand dollars in the last maybe year, maybe more. And the rest, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like the ethics and the morals for me personally, like I could genuinely make probably a million a year being an affiliate, but would I sleep at night? No. And would I feel shit about myself? Yes. Well, that's because you know that if you are that, like every dollar that you made is because somebody's lost it. Yeah. So if whereas we're making case, money yeah. because other people are making money and we're helping yeah. them not lose money and it's just a better way so to go about it. I think that comes from us seeing both sides. Like we see, obviously people win. We see people lose because we're copping DMs. But that's what, that's what I'd love to think, and I want to believe this, that people like Nathan Brown, people like Daisy Thomas, who's getting up there with Nathan Brown now, is probably Fev. the worst. Georgie Parker. Fev. Fev's not so much as bad as them, but obviously with his history, makes it way worse. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. in terms of what he's doing, he's not telling you to bet on fucking yeah, he's not shit. That's sports bet. Like sports guys. bet are Billy scripted. Brown Brendan looks, Goddard. Yeah, yeah. The, the top four, Brendan Goddard, uh, Nathan Brown, Georgie Parker, Daisy Thomas. There may be some other ones like Mixed Multi and those kind of guys. Like Billy Brownless, I think, has one as well. Like, there, I would love to know, like, know if they actually know what goes on. 
And I'd love to sit down with him for like a table or have a coffee with him and just say, look, do you, do you want to see this DM that we got from a punter the other day? Like, do you reckon, do you, do you reckon their multis are their multis? No. Or do you reckon sports no. bets just written a script for no, them? Of course. No way. That's that. Like when the ones, like maybe mixed multi, their piss take, like ones yeah. on the triple M, I haven't seen those, but I think they're probably theirs. But they're full piss take. Yeah, exactly. Like, but yeah. when Nathan Brown comes on and says, oh, the fucking value's here because old mates kicked two goals last week and, and sports so already fucking deflated the odds by 50% because they know people are going to bet on it based off last week. He literally is just relaying information. Same with Daisy. He, he's not going to fucking read the market. No. So, but, he, but they must know then. No, they don't. I, I want to I want to believe that they don't know how much people are losing, like in the naivety of how it ruins their lives. But then... If you're working for them, you have to know. I think I think they. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. That's why the Fev thing pisses me off yeah. because it yeah, ruined his, like it actually fully ruined his life. Yeah. Like he apparently went down the path of trying to sell his Coleman and shit, yeah, or yeah. did sell it, then got it back eventually. Mate, he but had to go to a jungle. He he released it all in the jungle. Yeah. He said how it ruined his life. So his it family. fully ruined his life. So yeah. he knows he lived that, and not only has he done that, he's now gone and got oh look, I'm re- rehabilitated. Yeah. Like I I now know how to punt for fun. And I want everybody to be Yeah, go read Bet Nation's like, um, responsible it. gambling thing yeah. and like, read that fucking piece of shit article or whatever he's written. This Literally, is, what, this is what's the worst. That, that's why I, This is why I really hate Fev's story. Um, firstly, because it did ruin his life and now he's encouraging it. But the way that they're marketing yeah. it from Bet Nation's point of view, it's almost like they're a rise trying... from the ashes. It's like, yeah, it is. It's a rise from the ashes. And they're like almost trying to play this like, we're the sensible bookie. It's like, look, if you're if you're a degenerate gambler yeah, don't who's had here. problems, yeah, yeah. no, 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 come with us because we've got Fabola, who's who's the face of change. He's he's like he's Fuck. he's changed. He's like, no, look at me. I lost all my money. It ruined my life. But I've been able to rediscover my love and and you know the fun of gambling without letting it you know continue to ruin my do life. Do you reckon if he was addicted to meth? Yeah. No, nah, seriously. Do you reckon if he was addicted to meth and then came back and was like, now started can, promoting, yeah. he was like, now I know how to do meth, you know, once a month with my mates. It's really fun and social. Do you reckon that would get looked upon the same way? Absolutely not. That's what, that's, yeah, that's that's what really makes good, me sick. Like, a, or if he was yeah. like a full-blown alcoholic, ruined his life, and he came out and started promoting VB, and he's like, yeah. oh, you know, I used to be a full-on alcoholic, ruined my life, lost my marriage, lost all my yeah. money, but now I can sip a beer once a month with my mates and it's fun. He would get ridiculed. See, they, it's because people don't look at gambling the same way as exactly, these other Exactly, they should. People don't see gambling as in the, the same in the same thing. ballpark as drugs, alcohol, cigarettes. It's the exact same. No, that's identical. I've said it before like would you have any like would you have the same thing if I stood outside a rehab center and just like baited people with like cheap heroin after mm. they come out? You'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh no, nah, man! Personal decision. They should. You know, yeah, they, should they can make better. their own call. Like yeah. it's 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 all up to you. You're you can make your own decision. So this is what I think the influencers possibly think is that they think, all right, these guys are going to lose anyway. Yeah. Why am I not allowed to cash in? Well, yeah, that's what they're going to lose anyway. They're going to yeah. He yeah. used to say that. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to provide a community for people who would have lost anyway. Yeah. I'm going to give them like prizes and shit. That's that's like giving them some value back. That's full sheet mentality. Like, fuck me, mate. Like you're only making money if they lose and the more they lose, you make more. So yeah. So of course you want to build those communities. Yeah. yeah. And I I'm promise you, me. like we could be making millions as affiliates um, and that's not like, it's so easy to do it. Like all you need to do is call up Ladbrokes and tell them you've got a yeah. fucking big following and you're fine. Like, going to uh, move on to a little bit. One thing that um, sort of, yeah, we, we've, we've touched on it a lot, um, you know, but not specifically. People in Australia are so ingrained to accept that losing is normal, right? And this yeah. article retouched on it again. Um, you know, people expect to go to the pub on a Saturday and they expect, you know, if I'm going to be punt, I've basically cashed in this $100 loss already. They know that's almost the expense of punting, right? So this has just built this culture within Australia where losing is completely normal. And it's not even, no- it, it, it's just accepted. It's, it's almost like, yeah, well, you lost a hundred bucks. You were gambling. It's what not even expect? accepted. Like, it's expected. It's expected. That was yeah. the word I meant to say. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's expected. It's like, oh, you're going to. Oh, okay. Well, you're going to lose a hundred dollars. Yeah, and that's it's right. like, and and then that's just that's a, that is literally the culture in Australia. But that's fun, man. It's fun. Oh, it's, badge it's, of it's honor. Fun. It's a badge of honor. You're yeah. wearing it's about like how much you. Oh, yeah, just if you don't bet, you know. It actually is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. People will almost like somewhat brag about how much they lost. Like yeah. they'll tell it with a bit of a smirk on their face. Like, yeah. But like deep down, that's pretty fucked. Like. Yeah, like, so this is what I actually do like with, like, um, like our community. And I think something that, you know, why people think that we are, you know, what we, we, what we have got here is a scam. Yeah. Because people actually have never, ever experienced the feeling of losing. And people think, like, people... Winning, you mean? Winning, sorry. sorry yeah, winning. winning. Yeah, so people are so used to, like, having a punt, 
going to the races, going to the tab, whatever it is, and losing. And they do have fun. Yeah. You know, but, but they've had fun and they've lost their $100 and they don't know any other way. I guarantee you, it is so much more fun going and punting and winning. But when we say this to people, like people will comment and be like, well, I'm punting for fun. But well, you can punt for fun and win. People will be like, well, they, they actually can't relate to that. They no. actually don't know what punting and winning feels like because they just have never won. And they've never, they can never even, like, they can't fathom the idea well, of winning. It comes back to that um, theory that you found this week w- regarding the, the salesman of the car yeah. telling you what's it called? The anchor it's bias. The, yeah, it was the anchor bias. Yeah. Yeah. Explain that. Like, yeah. So, so this anchor bias, it was it basically, it's a cognitive bias. And it says that, you know, you grasp onto the first piece of information that you hear about a given topic. And when you really rely on it, it's almost like, it's, I guess this is why we pick that's up a lot of the parents and everything. It's, it's yeah. almost like it's a fact. Whatever you hear early on, that's what you're going to believe as the absolute truth until you, know, you really get convinced otherwise with you know, research, stacks, whatever it may be. And the example that this video used was, imagine you went to a car salesman, he was offering a car and he said, this car's $20,000. You go, no worries. So automatically you've just like anchored $20,000 as that value of that car. You can't be told any, like, or you, you can be told otherwise, but that's always going to be your reference point. The next week, next week later, you go to the same um, same car salesman, and he goes, "This car's thirty thousand dollars." You're like, "What the hell are you talking about, mate? You just said it was twenty thousand dollars. You're ripping me off here." Yeah. Automatically, that's your reference point. That is the bias that you're going to put. That car might actually be worth forty thousand dollars, but because he told you it was twenty, now he's telling you it's thirty. You feel like you're getting ripped off. On the counter to that. If he comes in or week two, you go in and he says it's ten thousand dollars. You're thinking, You'll be you dude. ripper, yeah. I'm getting an absolute steal here. The car might actually be worth five thousand dollars. You've got no idea, but you've just held on to this bias that you've told from that first bit of information that you've you've been told, sort of thing. Yeah. And this this applies here. We we just expect to lose. We get told from day one, you are going to lose on the punt. The casino always wins. The house always wins. The bookies yeah, always you can't win. beat the bookies. You can't beat them. So then, naturally, people just automatically assume well, you're either not winning um, or you're a scam or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, so when people charge you $99.95 for a finals package and they lose and there's no public results, firstly, the person doesn't even want the public results because they just expect to lose. And it's only 20 bucks. Yeah. So it's only 20 bucks. That guy was helping me out. Oh, he lost, doesn't matter because they expected to lose and they don't even know what public results are. So it's a combination of obviously just having no awareness about what the fucking world is in terms of like you can win and if you're not winning that's wrong and you should be getting a refund and chasing that up so obviously we were touching on you know influences and what people see on social media and obviously we get a fair bit of (laughs) we'll call it feedback (laughs) through tiktok instagram a lot of the time it's like you know you blokes are a scam if you blokes were making all this money you'd fucking be doing on your own why are you wearing a beanie (laughs) why are you sitting on your grandma's couch why don't you drive a fucking mercedes so obviously, as a bit of a piss take today for some of our greatest fans, we thought we'd wear you know some nicer clothes so that we look a little bit more legitimate. Take that one uh, out of their arsenal, I guess. But <laughs> the thing that I wanted to touch on while we're talking about that is, you know, obviously Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, it can get pretty toxic sometimes. You yeah. know? And what are you? What are people getting out of those comments? What are people getting out of you know? Telling JP his head looks like a swollen balloon. Or well, I'll put like it. We'll put, yeah, like, we'll actually break every bone in my face. So you feel bad now, but I couldn't <laughs> give a fuck what you call me, honestly. Like, but what call me whatever. What, what's the point? I think of that? okay, it's a combination of a couple of things. My personal opinion, whether it's right, I don't know. I think a lot of people writing those comments are probably having like a bad day, or they they hate their lives at that point. Or this isn't like their their lives are terrible, but everyone goes through periods where they're having shit time, and it may make them feel better to like. I don't know. Try and drag someone poop, else. Sell, yeah. Tell someone they look like their head. Fucking, what's wrong with your face or your teeth are wrong or. But do you reckon they're whatever. saying that like they do? They genuinely want you to be upset. Like, yeah, what, of what course. Is the point no, of them, okay, so it's it's complex. So that that projected hate is normally on people who like it's tall poppy syndrome. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Now this is not. This may sound arrogant to people because of what the true definition of tall poppy syndrome is: is that people that rise above the pack, like we are above normal gamblers in terms of like we're winning, right? And maybe people look at look at us and be like, "Oh, like they're winning, so they're like fuck them." Oh, basically. it's 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 that. On but top we're of not fact- better than anyone else. Yeah, Let's yeah. just clarify that. But then they come back to us and they say, "Fuck these guys." I'm kind of jealous that I'm losing and they're winning, or people following them are winning. Plus, they're making a living out of it. Maybe they wanted to do what we want to do, and then they're like, "Fuck them." I'm gonna just hate on them because I want to make them feel like shit. 
because I don't want them to be successful because I, I hate what I'm doing. And I can relate to this because I never used to hate on people online, but when I used to do osteo, I was dissatisfied with my own life. And I used to get a little bit frustrated when I saw someone who was posting about how much they love osteo or how much they love their job. And I'm like, fuck, I want that. I never went down the pathway of like, oh, hey, you're a fucking piece of shit. I'm going to message him. But that made me feel shit seeing someone else succeed when I hated the position I was in. So I can relate. So my question or my challenge to these people is, is go internal and ask yourself why you're actually writing that. Like, would you publicly put your name to that comment? Would you show your family that comment? And maybe think about like, yeah, cool. We're fine. We're never going to hurt ourselves from that. But what if you did that to someone who actually went and hurt themselves? Would you actually feel good about that? But do you reckon if someone said it to like, you know, if someone said it to their parents or their their missus or one of their best mates, someone started having yeah. to go at them, surely they'd get defensive and be like, oh, you of fucking course. idiot, why are you doing that? So like, why? I don't well, and like, understand it. They, they probably want us to be like reactive to it. And we do react to it, but we don't react to it in a way that they probably expect. Yeah, they probably get more frustrated. It's just free and marketing. And we're never going to buy into like saying, oh, fuck that guy, I'm going to go bash him. We had a guy message us on Instagram <laughs> threatening to belt us when he was out or whatever if we're out in Melbourne on a fake account. Like at the end of the day, like I have genuine sympathy and I know the boys, we, we actually discussed this in our private chats. It's like we feel sorry for people doing that because of like – like what like it's so it's so dumb like what are you doing yeah if it's because you're feeling flat or shit or you've lost on the punt message us like yeah we we'll help you out help you get mm, in our literally get in our community and start making profit like we, we've had haters that have become like our longest haters. term subscribers like yeah. who just genuinely thought fuck these guys are a scam and, it, and it's obviously beyond that now we've been doing it for 22 months you can't really hide for that long subs, yeah. like <laughs> some people hate on us as well because they like some people think we're a scam and they want to sort of try and get the message out there because they think they're saving people. But some people hate on us because, and they know what we do works. They actually are yeah. full believers. They've actually either been a sub or they, they know that, you know, what we Dalsky. do is possible. Dalsky being one of them. There's a few of them. They know that what we do works. And this is where I think a bit of jealousy comes That's where the it, jealousy comes in. Where they're like, well, I actually know the information of, you know, they, they don't have a full information, but they, they know that the, the they foundational, they know, yeah. yeah, they think they do actually. That's a good point. They think they know everything required to do what we do. And so they're just pissed off that they aren't doing it. It's yeah. like, yeah. And well, go and do it. <laughs> yeah, Literally. Go and do it. Go, I challenge anyone to go and make a company and do no, it. No, but this is why we offer these people free months as well. It's like, yeah. bro, I don't care if you hate me. Like, we actually fucking want to make you we're, money. That's like, the thing. We're on, the other, like, we're on your side. Yeah, we're all trying to make money off the bookie. Like, when you're punting on a Saturday, mm. you're trying to make money off the bookie. We are doing it. We know that the way we do it works. Sure, it takes a bit of discipline. It takes a bit of structure. It's not fucking blind gambling. You're not going to get rich overnight. But, but what we do works. Like, the, come and yeah. do it with nah, us. But, but it's, but it's nah, not real people, gambling because we use bonus bets. Yeah, yeah that's that was today. Punching. Like, after, like, I made the comment of, oh, Simo, where's your public results? And he wrote, oh... They're in the members section, and then and then the next comment was so they're not public, and then he deleted it. And someone like three, four people messaged me on Instagram saying, "Oh, bro, he deleted your comment." And I'm not trying to expose, but I'm trying to just point it out. And then he'll do a story. Oh, your way is not legitimate because you're using promotions or bonuses. And mate, we're making fucking money. You are not. And oh yeah, also like <laughs> That's I've it. seen him, I've seen him post multis with bonus, bonus bets on it. Yeah. It. So why is it okay to do it that way but not the way we do it? Because he like, just tries to... Because it's, it's, it's so easy to con people with... If one person sees one story and they don't see the other ones that are deleted, you can con nine out of ten people who've seen it for the first bias, time. Right, yeah. So exactly. what, about, what about the people that say... Right, we've already kind of touched on this, but like, you know... If you if we have four hundred people following our service now, like when when are the bookies gonna shut us down, or when are we gonna be a problem for the bookies where it gets to a point where the bookies are like, fuck, we can't give out second and third bonuses anymore. Well, are we anywhere near that? I don't want to make predictions or make publicity about it, but the reality is we're a very small drop in the ocean still. Tiny. Um, four hundred subscribers. Let's say average unit size. We estimated me and Steve were on a live the other week um, on Friday night. Twenty bucks. Yeah, average 25, unit size. Twenty-five. Some of our top subscribers, two hundred plus. Some, uh, most new subscribers, ten dollars. So, average that out, twenty bucks, whatever. Four hundred subs. Um, it's three hundred and ten k a month. We estimated. Exactly. So that's assuming everyone follows every tip. They're not losing outside of the system, and they're positive. Uh, they're, they're net zero according to like signups and yeah. turnovers and non-promo and everything else that's required to sustain your accounts. Just a rough estimate. So three hundred and ten k in an industry that takes, I think it is close to ten billion a year. 
something like seven billion a year or something. Yeah, we they're, they're really at about like six and a half so, last so what's, year, but yeah. their turnover is greater this year. So yeah, they're, so they're we're looking at like seven million, roughly what? What's uh, so it's like like a billion? Th- sorry, three ten. Oh, within like five, three, within, three and a half million. Within right? five years, they'll be making a billion a month. Who? The bookies. Yeah, but I'm saying we're taking like three and a half million a year, assuming everyone oh, yeah, in that community nothing. is following. Yeah, yeah that's nothing. They're making 10 billion or 7 yeah, billion, yeah, let's nothing. say. It's fucking least. Like, and, and also, the, the other thing you need to understand is that's spread across like yeah, yeah. 40 or 30 that's bookies. That's not just from sports. Betting. So like everyone's taking pieces of money from everywhere, mm. right? And, and also like some of the Platinum Squad members who are doing it like in a way that they've actually conned bookies to lose. Yeah, and then goes through, over to Betfair. Betfair. Our most yeah. profitable guy literally milks his bookies every Saturday and he's literally living off redeposit offers because he's just conning them to fucking do that. Yeah. So he, the bookie thinks he's losing, but he's actually profiting because it's going over to Betfair where you can withdraw and it's not a bookie. So that that's like, <laughs> no, we're, we're miles off it because those same promotions are the ones that entice Correct. your mug gambler to get on his phone. Like Tab, for that's example. that's how they differentiate themselves. Yeah, yeah Tab, tab, tab are literally moment, offering you a free $50 Palmer. bonus. Or a Palmer. Yeah, a Palmer <laughs> to go into the venue. That's and they know if you go to there for a fucking Palmer, yeah. Like you go there for a Palmer <laughs> or a Palmy if you want to be fucking... A Palmy. Palmy yeah, from all the, all the people in Queensland or whatever, they yeah. think it's a Palmy, it's a Palmer. But um, no, nah, but they, they know if you go to the, to the Tab and eat... Yeah, if you fucking, sit there, wait for your You're going to bet on the harness or the... Yeah, what is that thing called? <laughs> the fucking... The fake shit? Oh, trackside. Track track side. I was sitting there with my missus. Wait bring in bonus bets. And I, I've never really seen it before properly. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, this can't be legit. <laughs> People are legitimately yeah, betting man, on That's it. not the most rigged thing in the world. I can't imagine. I was picking winners bet. while I was eating dinner. Like, I wasn't betting. But <laughs> oh, I was like, wait. I'm like, wait, look at this. New system. No, but in all seriousness, like, you'd have to be quite like... Yeah, like they're doing all this, like tab, go back to their offer. They're doing one and two. And if you place a bit, I don't even want to encourage, I'm not even going to talk about it because yeah. I don't want people to go and bet on it. But they're, they're, all those promotions are used to, to suck yeah, people in. Yeah, they're just in. there so that you bet. So more. if you use them yeah. too, you're just going to be like another punter. I correct? think this is, yeah, this sort of really sort of like encapsulates sort of basically this whole podcast that we've talked about. Like, yeah. These promos are all there. They're all there to suck you in, to get you. So, so with the ones, some of them will literally just give you a $20 bonus bet, right? They'll just give it to you for absolutely nothing. You don't even need to deposit anything into it. They'll just put in a $20 bonus bet. Bet three, six, five. And what they're doing there is they're trying to toy with your emotions right there. They're trying to get you to feel the thrill of almost winning or, or actually winning or just getting that getting that burning desire back again so that then you deposit, then you it's keep going again. It's a free crack, man. It's a free crack. And then you, you might almost win and then you go, oh, well, I'll just put in a hundred bucks then. Like they're just completely toying with you. Yeah. With right there. But, um, fuck, where was I? Well, it's, it's I, the way I see it is and the way a lot of our subscribers like what we do now and like, for example, that Johnny Drogan guy who used to lose heaps, lost 9K in a day once and now he's excited to make 20 bucks off, off one race. It's like a fuck you to the bookies because mm. like they, they've taken your money forever and now it's like, fuck you, I'm going to take... 30 i'm going to take 50 i'm going to take 100 off you for the first month then i'm going to take 500 the next month and then you start taking thousands off them and it's like fuck you you ruined my life for five years or you you took Mm. thousands of thousands of now i'm going to fuck you back and that's why we get so passionate because we know we're we're doing that to the bookies and yes we're never going to dent them and bring them down because we don't really want to because obviously people we're not going to be able to do what we teach them we're not going to make money for people if they take it away but yeah. Oh, um, still though, if it got to a point a where we had off. fucking two thousand well, subscribers and they're like, "Fuck, this is a problem." Well, that's a win. That's a great result. That's and great and result, even if it yeah. ruins our company and we can never do anything again, that's who cares? We, we've literally changed the industry, and that's but that's a full risk. I mean, you look at sort of where the promos were compared to yeah. twelve months ago, compared to where they are now. Like right now, spring it's a bit of a outlier of a period. Exactly. But particularly over winter, there was definitely less promos this year than there were last year. Yeah. And this sort of highlights why now is such an amazing period. Why spring is Christmas. Yeah, you got to cash in. But um, I also think as well, like with that promo thing, we've we've obviously altered and changed the yeah. way that we tip significantly because we are aware that like the only thing stopping all of our subscribers from making money is if they lose their accounts. So mm. we're running it a lot more conservatively in a sense that, all right, we're only going to bet into races where we know there's enough coverage, where we can accommodate for all of our subscribers because the longer that they stay with us, the more money they're going to make. And the only thing that stops them if they follow the instructions is if they lose their accounts. And yeah, that's, and that's why we can't, make this service anymore from when we had a hundred subscribers, like other services might be able to, to tip yeah. into a race where there's two promotions. 
And it's like, we can't do that because we have 400 people. And it's like, now we have to, obviously you, you're in mainly in charge of the data and, and essentially we have to, we said this on the last podcast, we have to weigh up everything, including profit, as well as sustaining our customers' accounts and not even that, but like linking them essentially to, to small yeah. bookings I mean, and, and we're always like getting that. feedback from the community if people yeah. are getting their accounts banned and exactly. generally speaking, not many people are leaving, nah. very rarely and people that's, are leaving due to bans. Literally, I reckon there would have been three in the last two, three years yeah. um, from, from leaving and not being able to follow. And that's probably because they didn't follow the instructions or recently we, we kind of have updated the, the videos yeah. on the welcome to be more in depth now and obviously made, made it more clear. So, And in contrast to that, how many people do you hear rookies online, oh. your mates that just get their points where account can yeah. for abusing, you know, oh. they, they don't even realize they're abusing it. They don't even know they could get their accounts. Yeah, they get I, 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 like I've been in other discords and, and left, right and center people just copping bands and, and messaging me, hey man, like is it too late to get involved? I've lost six accounts. I tried to do it on my own. I came from like bonus bank or something like that. And the reality is like, unfortunately those services just teach you how to make money and anyone can teach you. I can teach you, go through our hustle free course, teach you how to make money for free. Yeah. I'm not charging you for that because like Tom does the DMs and someone might be suggesting to buy a platinum and he's like, oh, but you can do it yourself. And Tom will tell them, go, you can go make 5K on your own with the signups. And like what's Bit stopping less, the person, 3K, let's yeah. say, three or 4K. And it's like, we tell them that you can, and it's there to be done, but if you don't want your accounts uh, to be closed, yeah. For a some people, months. that's fine, right? That's the end of their journey, and we and we understand that. But yeah. you know, for the people that are like, "Fucking hell, this has opened my eyes to what's possible," then it's like, "Well, don't do this yet, yeah." yeah. Because you can be doing. X, I, y, I can Z actually like, speak personally. I remember I got told um, by someone we used to work with at the AO, who who was like, "Mate, you can just go and make a thousand dollars straight away." This is before I just got into it. it was literally the summer before yeah. I just got into match betting, and I was just like. You know what? I'm just gonna burn these accounts. Just make fuck it. Oh, yeah. yeah fuck. Like I'm not. I'm not actually at, like whatever. Like I'm not a massive gambler. I got my sports bet account. Like you know, I'm just gonna burn them. Yeah. But then I was like, now that I didn't yeah, it's do money that, that, I don't have. You so regret. You, you did. Well you did that now. For oh, some if if I'd have done that, there's no way I'd be sitting here right now. Absolutely no chance. Yeah. At all. yeah. And, and anyone doing marketing for their service, doing that as their primary source of marketing, or like doing, I don't know, a point spread promotion, make thirty dollars and tell every Tom mm. Dick and Harry to do it. Yeah. Like if that's your marketing, then you need to address your sustainability and defense. But I have a question for Tom that's been from a subscriber. Oh, um, I'll read it out. <laughs> I'll get the DM up. Hang on a sec. So this guy had a question. Um, his name was Shep. Um, he said, he's a new sub. He goes, any advice to those who are starting out with the system and beginning to see profit, but still hear the gambling monster in their ear saying, just find an easy two to one turnover for a little account boost. Like, what do you say to those people? As in, like they want to just place like, yeah. Some so of like they've made their profits on a two. They might have made two hundred dollars in their first couple of weeks, a thousand for their first month, or five hundred for the first month, and then they're like, oh fuck, I've made five hundred. Like, imagine if I double it. Like, is this yeah, an yeah, easy yeah. A little safe one. Yeah. Well, the easiest way, and I've had some DMs like this. The easiest way that I try to get it across to them and anyone listening is that that's what you would have done before you came to the system, right? You, that's exactly what you would have thought. That's exactly what you would have tried to do when you made a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks when you won instantly, you know, that's not my money. How can I make more? And we don't do that at the system. We don't tell you to do certain things or to follow certain rules or to bet in a certain way because we like the sound of our own voice. We tell you that because we know it works. So what we say to these people is I would say to him, because mate, what happens if that loses? Mm. There's no such thing as an easy double up. There's not an easy, you can't just double your money. And also you've worked fucking hard for that 500 Correct. bucks. We haven't just hit three winners on Saturday. You've made 500 bucks. You've been turning bonus bets over. You've been following properly. You've been sticking to your unit size. You've done a lot of hard work to make that first 500 bucks. And the fact that you still even think about potentially throwing it away at the chance of doubling it, yeah. it's not worth it. And if you keep doing that, we always stress so heavily after, especially after winning days, guys, turn your bonuses over yeah. because they are free money and whether or not we've made 10 units profit 50 units profit no profit or we've lost five units for the week that bonus bet is still worth the exact same amount of money if you yeah. do the right thing with it so yeah i understand where they're coming from we've all been in that position we've got free money holy fuck i didn't lose this week i've actually got 500 bucks let's turn it into a grand but you know we want you to be here in three six twelve months time and if you're going to do that every single time we have a profitable day your results no, will not no mirror ours else. and you'll be significantly worse off in the long run. So yeah, that's a great question and something that a lot of new subscribers grapple with and after, you know, we follow up with all of them after their first week and so many of them, I'd say at yeah. least 10, 15% of them say, 
fuck mate, we had a great day, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, I, I've gambled all of my bonus bets and. You know, I mean, they're, they're way less frequent. I reckon six yeah, yeah, months ago, we'll probably get three yeah, of those a weekend. They're now less probably frequent, one. But, but it still happens, right? Yeah. And it's just like, look, we understand that's going to happen. We understand where you're coming from. But we know that if you do this for three, six, 12 months time, you're going to have, you know, 100, 200, 300 units profit in your pocket. But that only happens if you do things correctly. Yeah. And that's yeah. why all the videos are there. That's why we offer basically 24-7, you know, support. If you send us a message, we get back to you with a voice message. That's yeah. the difference. So obviously we would have sent a nice voice message to him, but that's that's what you got to yeah. do. Yeah, and I'll follow up actually Mez, who has been a, a resub who has admitted to losing a lot of money when he was away from the system. And he followed up after Saturday. He, I want to tie this into the, the Wednesday results from two weeks ago and then the Mooney Valley and the Saturday where we kind of went that little yep. ranging period. And then since then, we'll talk about that in a sec. But he was one of the new subs who just subbed and he was essentially like... Returning sub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, returning sub, yeah. but he just came in again, and yeah. he's he he was in the chat saying, "Oh, uh, that's it. I'm unlucky. This is why we're losing, losing like that day, whatever." And then after the period of results, which have just happened on the weekend, essentially we went 30 units in the last week, um, and he's come back and said, "Hey, mate, just want to show my appreciation to you, blokes. Completely have changed my way of punting. Even though I've only been with you for like two to three weeks, my mindset has taken a massive switch." Like, I just laugh at myself now when I get a temptation to throw money on a favorite horse dog. That's free money. I'm still learning, as I won't lie, I still have put two bonuses on a horse in WA instead of converting it. Luckily, they have won, but I still get mad at myself for not converting. But yeah, I guess that's part of the learning process. But I am fully committed for the long term here, and my mindset will eventually take a full turn. Cheers, lads. So that's a three-month sub. He's re-subbed for three months. And I guess... It takes time. Like you're not going to go flick like Johnny Drogan and, and completely yeah. change it. Um, it. It literally takes time. It's it's a grind. Like you want to progress, yeah. but it's so fucking rewarding when you delete that. Like he, you can see how fucking nice it is reading that. Yeah. And so it, for, for for some people, I've touched on it before, and it's like the difference between emotions and sort of behavior. Yeah. And a lot of people are not even aware that their emotions are controlling their behavior, right? Yeah. So when you come in and have this change of mindset, you know, that's that's being that's identifying what your emotions are doing and identifying how it is impacting your behavior, but then still changing that behavior still isn't easy. And that does take time. You know, here's a perfect example. Yeah. He has changed his behavior. He hasn't got to where he wants no. to be. Not like Johnny Jogan. He's literally gone from, you know, 100 to zero basically with his yeah. change. But at least now Mez here has been able to see all right, the way that I was doing things, that was an emotional reaction and that was impacting my behaviors to the point where it was, you know, hurting losing. my triple bottom line, yeah. losing essentially. So, you know, that's something that we really do harp on. Mindset, emotion, it's all related and understanding that, you know, if you take a loss, don't let it impact your next bet. And no. that's what we offer here at the system is a really sort of, that's what structure is. When we're talking about structure, if you want to put an umbrella term on it, that is what structure, because structure means that you cannot go outside of the boundaries yeah. no matter what happens. And this happened in the vlog that we did. You know, we, we did a vlog, you know, filmed like four or five months ago, and we actually had a shocking day. I think we had negative eight or yeah, something. Yeah, negative eight. It was in June, yeah. Um, and, you know, we, the, we were, there was at the start of the video, we were riding a winner. It was an $8 winner, and we were getting a little bit excited and carrying on, whatever. Just and for the record, we didn't even bet on any of those horses. No, yeah. So, so that wasn't even, you know, yeah. we're not betting. We're purely invested for the subscribers' sake. You know, we, none of us really bet anymore at all. Um, we're just purely invested, you know, putting all that eggs into, you know, making money for the subs but anyway on the vlog so the by the end of the day we had negative eight and you could definitely see you know compared to when we hit the eight dollar winner to the end of the day we were you know we were a little bit flat we were disappointed we weren't disappointed for ourselves we were disappointed for you know all of the subs of course and a lot of the comments that we got on that video was oh these look like a bunch of guys who are betting with emotion you know yeah, punt and losing punts. yeah they're telling yeah they're telling us to not but do i that. actually wanted that to be i confess i wanted that to be a losing day and you guys are probably looking at me like what the fuck's wrong with you yeah, you always want weird shit mate no but it shows people <laughs> that like firstly we're transparent like who the fuck would post an eight minus eight day i reckon that would be in their top 10 worst days ever yeah and we posted our only ever vlog about it it's like almost like what, what what's wrong with you like are you trying to get subscribers or are you trying to tell people that you lose mm. and it's like secondly it actually shows because i knew from that point in time go and check the results from june um 11 and yeah. go see our results and you'll pretty much laugh um, I think we've had three negative weeks since, and it's been about oh, we had like yeah, it was like seventeen it was like 80 weeks, units, eighty consecutive units after that day. I think without a losing day. Yes, yeah, so seventeen weeks. I think we've gone fourteen positive and three negative. And going back to more recently, this kind of happened not as badly as that, but it it, it kind of was similar because of the way it panned out on Wednesday. I think it was 
the 23rd. It was grand final. Yeah, so 21st, weekend. I think that is. 21st of um, September. Um, we went zero out of six. At, was it Sandown or was it combined across a couple of venues? Anyway, we went zero out of six for the day. We went minus 4.05 units. And I've never seen the chat so bad for a while. And we only went minus four. There were 23 days that have been worse than that in the history of the 203 days that we've ever tipped. And it was like fucking someone died. And because we didn't hit a winner for the day. Yeah. And that, that mindset of having to get reward then, as opposed to understanding that this is a long-term system that essentially never ends, infinite end. Like we had to explain to the subscribers that you don't need to get that winner. Like it's literally yeah. just a numbers game. We're It'll minus four. The wash. It was just a small wash. We're fucking day. plus 15 at that yeah. point for the month. We ended up plus, there were plus 20. We ended up plus 35 for the month. Yeah. But just look at, like for some reason they start their day at zero. You're plus 20 for the month. Yeah, they all forget the 200, 300 units. Or you're plus in their back 200 pocket. for the year or you're plus 700, 670 yeah, for the month. Yeah, or 20 for the month even. Like literally. So then Friday night went along, another six races or eight races or six races, minus, uh, zero break again, break even. even. Yeah. Saturday, break another even. another nine races, break even. So we're sitting at minus four. How but many people have stopped following at this point? I don't know. This is yeah. the thing. But then Sunday happened and Steve um, took control of the ship, saved the company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he sent home four out of five winners at Sandown. Um, yeah. And we went plus 13 and the chat was like someone has just fucking won the lottery. But that's like, yeah, and we use that as the perfect example with all the weekly follow-ups. It's like, this is where you remove emotion because so many punters would have been like, even subscribers, I have no doubt, would have got to Sunday morning and been like, nah, we're on a cold yeah. streak. You know, it's just not it's just not our weekend. We'll cop the loss and, you know, I'll come back on Wednesday or I'll wait till they start backing a few winners before I follow again. And that's, you know, emotion. That's thinking you have control of the situation. Yeah. That's you, you know, going outside of the structure. As you said, that's, mm. you're going outside of the lines there. You're, you're breaking yeah. the rules, right? And you can do whatever you want, but... If you follow the structures, you follow the rules. And again, we on a Saturday, we usually tip into what? Anywhere from 10 to 20 races, right? We only tipped into like 25 races across the whole weekend, but it was just spread across four days. Yeah. Correct. And so it was very hard for them because if, if we're minus four after the first three races on a Saturday, no, not many people will jump off, right? Because no. like, fuck, we've got Heaps 18 more. races left, guys. You know, And if they took that attitude on Wednesday and go, oh, we've still got 18 races we left this week, Nobody's jumping off, but it's because the end of the day, right? We didn't get a winner today. We didn't get a winner for three days, whatever. We didn't get any profit for three days. Fuck, you're on a cold streak. Then you don't follow Sunday. You miss out on 13 units. You know, yeah. you miss out on going plus 10 for the week. And the only thing that cooked you was your own emotion. Like, you Literally. just couldn't remove emotion from that situation. So, I actually thought about this. We, we talked about this on last week's podcast, and I, I said one thing, but I'm actually going to change what I said. Um, and I'm going to, I've been thinking about it during the week. I see, I see this as sort of a positive thing, right? So obviously this stems from people having too high of expectations. Um, you know, they, they expect to, you know, we, we particularly, we had a period in July or it was July when we had our biggest month. Plus 58. We had, yeah. yeah, plus 58 units and we went three weekends in a row where we went plus 15, plus 15, plus 15. And classic JP's like, we need to have a fucking losing day. To, <laughs> yeah, to literally, like, I want people to lose to wake up because the more they lose up. and they start progressing more that way. Yeah, but like, obviously like we don't actually want anyone nah, to lose. It, Maybe it's inevitable. Does, but, no, like, yeah, no, but but what, what JP meant by that was like, we need people to understand that these days, whilst they are great, you know, and we yeah. love fill ups, 15 you know, days, you buddy beauty, they're not going to happen every single day. And they're just as likely as happening as a day where we go negative six or negative five or something. So take that into account. That's fine. So, you know, understand those expectations. However, what I wanted to add to that was, I see it as a positive that people are get getting frustrated when we have these days of break even, negative one, negative two, because... Unlike the rest of Australia, the rest of Australia, if you break even on a day, you're expect you're pretty happy with that, right? Because once again, touching on what we've already talked about, lose. you're expecting to lose. That's the losing culture. We've actually changed that whole culture within our community. Yeah. Our community has expectations of winning. Yeah, that's every ninety nine point nine percent of Australia has expectations of losing within the punt or like on the punt. They expect to lose, and when they lose, they're not even that disappointed because what did they expect? They already knew they were going to lose. We now get to the point where if we go a negative four day, people are like fucking angry. Because we've completely <laughs> changed that expectation. Yeah. We've, we've now built something where people expect to win, which in in that sense, I see it as a positive. Yeah, that's I've never thought of it like that, but it, it kind of ties into what I want people to do. I want them to constantly progress along that spectrum. And fast forward to Wednesday last week, after we've just gone plus 13 on Sunday, we go plus 4.6 on Wednesday, we go plus 12 on Saturday. We've gone plus 30 on Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday. It's mental. And if you jumped off at yeah. minus 4... 
minus four is not even it's a fucking four percent of your bankroll eight percent if you're really aggressive bro you just missed 30 units like you've lost if because you're, you couldn't hold like keep it keep just it fucking check. follow it yeah. and we'll guarantee you'll win and it's i did this massive like inspirational attempt speech <laughs> tom reckons people would have ran through walls <laughs> after it on saturday i was pumped like we just got on plus 12 we've gone plus 29.8 for the for the last six days and i said look guys like fucking well done for like sticking around Welcome to spring. Let's fucking load. Let's lock and load. <laughs> lock and load, he <laughs> And Tom's messaged me pissing himself. And he goes, mate, they're all going to go run through walls. <laughs> and I well, was that's like... that's like when people say like, you guys, you know, you say not to be emotional. We, we're we still like passionate. Like, nah, fuck. We, we want to fucking win. make people money. Fuck and, and the fuck best... Them. Yeah, fuck the bookies. And the best thing is though, like from... And I sort of understand where JB is coming from. When, when we have like really nice periods after a losing period... Yeah. It's as you said. It's like fucking well done because six months ago when you weren't following us, you would have fucking just kept Literally. donating. You would have kept punting. We had a you would have been in such a worse position. The fact that you've got through that little rut yeah. and now you've yeah. got thirty units profit to like enjoy it. It's like, not even. It wasn't even. Appreciate it was, the good times. Yeah. And it was also like I think it was seven weeks ago we went minus ten. Fourth yeah. worst day ever. Like you were depressed. We had to refund <laughs> twenty four people during that thirty day period. There's a three day out overlay where people were refunded. And people were wondering like why we didn't refund all 400. It was because only the subscription period for those subs went through there. 16 out of 24 are still around. They've gone plus fucking 60 or plus something 61, since then. Plus 61.3. Like, yeah. it's just like, who remembers that? No. No one. And in like, on that day, there would have been subscribers who unsubbed or got angry and stuff. And it's like, we didn't care like because we know it's going to turn around. But you just need to just zoom out and just yeah. look at this whole period. Like I would say, look at it in three month blocks. Yeah. Don't look at it in months. Don't, don't even look at it in like yeah, weeks or months. Look at it three months and say, I'm following this for three months and I'm not breaking the rules for three months. And if I don't make profit during that period, which we know you're going to make profit, we've got a 30 unit guarantee on a three monthly new sub. Yeah. Like then I can assess. Don't look at it in a day. Don't look at it in a week. Don't look at it in a month, just three months. And then fucking, We'll just thank you, thank yeah. us later you, you don't have to thank us you just count your pockets use your money wisely and, and fuck the book so to wrap us up obviously <laughs> we're in spring we're in the peak of spring we've had an absolute fill up the last week do you want to just quickly touch on results Steve over you know the yeah. last maybe what, when was the last time we did a podcast maybe the results of the last couple oh, of months and then we'll probably it was wrap it up. probably like July-ish we, we, we had our worst month ever followed by our best month yeah. ever in the middle of that month I think yeah okay July so was, I mean you, you've sort of touched on it yeah. a bit obviously this this losing week that we had or this losing period was, yeah, I think seven weeks ago where we had a negative yeah. 10, 10 unit week or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, since then we've gone plus plus 61 units over the last six weeks. So that's, you know, 10 units profit a week um, on average. And that's at 65% turnover. Obviously, some people are getting higher than that. And if you look at it from a, yeah, like a, a simple like monetary value, you know, that's $600 for people on a $10 unit size or, you know, $50 unit size. That's three grand over the last six weeks. And like... These are real numbers. These are very achievable numbers. A fifth dollar unit size is very achievable. So it is really nice to see. I've got a, one of my mates is following. He messaged me before Saturday and he's messaged me and he's on a fifth dollar unit size and he's like 1700 in September Who's already. This? Uh, his name's Moore. Moore? Yeah. Moore. <laughs> it's fucking Moore. That's what I call him. Oh, sick. So what, what's easy platinum? No, he's not platinum. No, oh, he fucking shouldn't be following the rules Ooh. on a fifty dollars unit type. Fucking mool. I've told him. I've told him. No, I've told him, him, told told him, him, I've, no I've, I've told him. I'm like, mate, jump in. But he's, yeah, nah, uh, fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So he, he's obviously he's enjoying it. These are real numbers. These <laughs> yeah, are very yeah. achievable. But like this, this isn't anything that we, you know, we, we didn't, ex you know, we expected this. You know, after we had that losing yeah. day off, you know, thirty five units in in September. You know that's just above average so it's not like we're we're, we're seeing beach balls at the moment no. you know we're obviously doing well um but we've had another nice day on saturday as well october's got off to a really good start but we fully expected this with spring you know the beauty of spring the more promos in spring allows us to be more flexible in the way that we tip it allows us to be more selective in the way that we tip it doesn't mean that we've been tipping you know brashly in the past but it means that we can be a lot more selective now and really um, you know, focus in on where the higher EV is yeah. as, as, as opposed to in winter when there's less promos, but yeah. we still want to be turning over a profit. Um, you know, once again, it doesn't mean that we're, we're, we're tipping things we shouldn't in winter, but we're just a lot more selective now purely because it means we can tip into yeah, more, more races. Variety, more there's more variety. There's more units being outlaid across a large number of day, greater flexibility, ultimately more profit as well as that. You've also got followers who are following and they're getting bonus back to fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth, any race, any, yeah, position, any position sometimes. Um, and so there, most people I would probably estimate are getting an extra probably 
two or three units worth of bonus i reckon every single saturday um you know and that's you know that's already what that, that's an extra 2.1 units if they're getting three units bonus roughly um so you know that's that that definitely adds up so it is a really nice time to be involved 100 percent. it is christmas and it's only going to be heating up as we continue to go on september started well and I would say, well, when does, is it really sort of Melbourne Cup is the last sort of well, day of spring? I, I was actually, we were speaking about this last week. It really just rolls through. Like yeah, it's gonna there's be, no sports, so they have to keep it, the They just roll going. through. Like, obviously, we're going to have like Vic Carnival, but then there's going to be like mm. WA Carnival, there's Queensland Carnival, you know, first couple of, Magic Millions is the first yeah, couple of weeks yeah. of January. It kind of really doesn't stop. And then it gets into winter when it peters yeah, out a little bit. Like but like May even like autumn, slow, like, yeah. you know, March, April, we're still going to have Group 1 racing. Yeah. Like, the next six, seven months is really a massive part of the racing calendar. And then obviously it's going to die off a little bit during winter. It's still, you know, I'm just looking at last year's results, like in winter, seven and a half, 29.3, 25. So we've still picked up another 55 units like during winter. Yeah. Like it doesn't stop. There's still profit on the table. It's just obviously a little bit different. As you said, like us being able to be more selective or being more aggressive where we want to, where there's more EV and knowing that our subscribers have more, more edge in the market. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a, it's a, we're in a great position. It's fucking sick to have four. I think last spring we had like 190 subscribers, I think maybe around about that following. Yeah. yeah. The fact we've got 400 now is awesome. And yeah, yeah I can't wait. To I, see I what think the 400 the as well has become better subs. Like just to say, like we've probably got three hundred really good subs now, as opposed to just having people who fly Floating in and out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people buying weeklies here and there. We we say this correlation between like the people who eat for long term versus not on a weekly is pretty high. Like they're not watching the videos, but yeah, if you are a subscriber, you've never had a better chance or potential sub, never had a better opportunity to get the best content. We've just updated five new videos on the member section. Brand new so website. if you do subscribe, please listen and watch every single second of every single video before you even think about putting a bet on because we've put our worked our asses off it took me three months to make the first one two months to make the third one um and these boys were rinsing me for Just a long a time weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks away i literally was saying a couple of weeks up. for literally like <laughs> three months Maxie. yeah Maxie. so do the fucking work and you'll get paid later because as i said build the foundation properly on your house don't build the the house without the foundation because it'll fall down so I think we'll leave it there. If you want to, got a discount code. Yeah, for... I've got one. I've, obviously, we're doing this is the uh, the podcast replay this week. So <laughs> I know what. Oh, I had a better one, but I, uh, I don't know if we want to do it. Nah, don't do yours because yours will be stupid. So replay. We'll do replay ten <laughs> replay for this one. 10, I'm happy with that. For the end of the podcast, oh, I had a better one, which would get more subs. All right, what is it? Do you want to do it? Yeah, do Simo it. Simo ten. Nah, that's stupidity. <laughs> that is stupidity. I hope this stays in the podcast. You're a fuckwit, yeah. and we'll see you next time. Shout out to the <laughs> shout out to the couple of lads that I ran into in Richmond the other night yeah, as well at the, the Dirty Swan. On yeah. the train who I gave a free month to, you didn't fucking join, so you're missing out. You missed out on thirty units. Literally. Where are you? Alright, see ya. See ya. Cheers, guys. You gotta clap or someone clap. Loud. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's done the above the head one. That's right, it still works. It's all the same. Fuck me. I don't understand why we do that and then we don't start straight away. I don't no, it's, you just it's look at it. It's a big spike on the audio. Oh. And then all the camera audio is a spike there. Yeah, and you okay. just sync them all start together. Yeah. And that's it. If this. It will fuck up again. Oh. It fucked up one second after we finished recording with Danny. So what's the problem there? No, oh, that was good. a heat. That was a camera. I fixed that. Okay. Not oh. too hot. Bro, the dams are flocking. Good. Another one. Fuck if that wasn't filming. Yeah, nice. No, this one emptied. Oh no, we fucked it. Why? No, you fucking kidding. I promise you. Oh, that one's actually fucked. Swear on my life, it says no space on memory card. No. I swear on my life, it does. Oh, mate. Like I full on swear on everything <laughs> that it says that. <laughs> oh my god. Do we need? Can we do without that? When, when did it go off? I don't mate. know. Why does this shit happen? How can you see how much got reported? I don't want to know.